Let's go, let's go. One last round of helping the peoples. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. A round of helping the peoples. Let's do it. Let's see what you did there. Let's run. That's because I am cool. I'm very proof cool. Look at, look, one more last look at that cool loading logo dice thing. Wow! Totally finishing this game that, right? We'll see. Wow! So cool. Very, very awesome. Wow! That's right, 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 right. I'm always blocking the cool loading screens, you know? See that? I'll block him. Just live over here. Well, we got going on again. One upgrade points. More mushrooms. We got like four stabilizers. I think I'm good somehow. No, I don't think I need to worry about mushrooms. But were we doing again? We were, uh, doing some stuff. Hmm. <laughs> so. That's, that, that is how long we have to, uh, come up with a strategy to fight back. I finish. I'll probably finish this game today. I finished the main story like uh, two streams of this ago. And this is the DLC story, so. It's very exciting stuff. Well, we finish. We fill up one circle at a time. Got this. Hmm, it hit a good rhythm and soon the supplies are heading out to all corners of the pilgrim seed. This can work! <gasps> can we, can we, can we, can we get out of here? Hi, streamer. Hi, viewer! What's up? What's happening? How's it going? How you doing tonight? I hope you're having a great night. Filled with french fries. You work in sync with the other team, splitting the job so that by the time you are done, there are tens of new births in place. Whoa. They just keep coming. Perhaps the flux event scared enough people that they really believe the eye will collapse. Perhaps they are sick of Haven Age, of the Council's infighting and the hardliners. Or perhaps they just want to take a chance at some new future. A place that is anywhere but here. Whatever it is, the evacuees don't stop. They come on the flotilla's shuttles, on their own ships, however they can. You've seen so many faces pass that they are almost meaningless now. A parade of features that seem both familiar and distant. You've been helping people, lifting bags, bringing in supplies, directing them to the berths you helped build. Some of them recoil from your touch, still unfamiliar with sleepers. Others treat you with pity, some with hate. Snatching back their bags and storming off. That's some um, robotist. Sleeperist. Still, you help. Still, you carry boxes and bags. Nothing can stop you. You don't look for Soul. You know he is busy. Just like you. Trying to make this thing work. Trying to fit as many people as will come onto the Pilgrim Seed. You know you will see him before all this is over. You keep working, but there's something in the back of your mind. Something eating away at you. You try to hold it to the back of your thoughts, but it keeps coming back. The eye is over. That is the thought. That the eye, even if the flux doesn't get it, 
is on its way out. How can it survive when these floods of people are leaving it behind? That's a good point. Don't got enough people to keep it running. It's a thought that troubles you because it makes you question why you have held on here for so long in a place that seems so temporary for so many people. Are you just a stubborn idiot? Someone who didn't get the message? Or are you strong, committed for lasting the storm, for seeing the collapse coming and facing it head on? Because there is something you are sure of now. What? This place, like all places, is temporary. What? A temporary place. All places are temporary. Nothing lasts forever. You did eat some fries earlier today. Super tasty, right, Mexican boy? Best form of potato. You're hoping to trade them? We're hoping to do a trade, huh? Now, you see here, young man, I don't do trades. Do I look like a trade filia to you? Do I? No. I am uh, not a trader. You don't trade in this game anyway. Understand? My profile coolness will last forever. That's goddamn right. 200 years from now, when they're searching the recesses of YouTube archives, they'll find me. And be like, who's this cool lady? Totally, totally. Have some notes there. You're taking notes? That's right. I don't trade. Oh. Totally. Hmm, I was I I'm sorry. And as each face passes you, each family packs up and gets on board the pilgrim seed. It feels even more temporary, ever more fragile. Which means it either desperately needs protecting, or it desperately needs to be left behind. The choice is yours. Let's work on you next. You managed to refactor the sensor automation so the system receives better, more accurate data. Cool. Let's see what we get here. Positive. You start to get a sense of how step and greenway plants might work together, feed each other, form new symbiotic relationships. Ooh. Neutral, huh? You work carefully to set up the new green dust houses with greenway plants, building out gardens of fungi and tubers. And that's all I can do today. Yes! Thanks, you can have my fries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tasty, tasty. Hmm. Where? Where do I eat in this game again? <laughs> Wait, there's some here, right? The other ones give you three bars, so the other ones are actually better if you're willing to go all the way over to the Tower or the Emphis. They're better by. I'm lazy, though. Why am I going all the way back up here? Consume. That's right, that's right, that's right. Consume. Let's use one scrapple. Hmm. 
Could have had some better rolls today. That's marginally better. But only marginally. Do, 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 do. Rip. Oh, I'm getting to that. Now I must get to more foods. I guess we'll go this way. Takes me like an extra 30 seconds. Oh my gosh, 30 whole seconds. That's right, that's right, that's right. That's right, that's right, that's right. I'm flickering, huh? Well, I gotta feed my cat. Cat fed. That's a long time, yeah, 30 seconds, super long. Ooh, got some good dice rolls today. Oh, wrong one. Mushrooms are ready to harvest, but I have to use dice for that, and I'm not willing to do that. But like, all my dice over here. Do, 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 do. Woohoo! <clears throat> Managed to refactor. Oh, wait, that's the same one from before. You sit in one corner of the dust house and inspect your work. This dust house, the one where plants from the greenway and, fr and some of the steppe species intermingle, has become your favorite. The moss and dust sharing the space in curving terraces. The pale knots of steppe silk freckled with yellowing lechal symbiotes. It is a hypnotic arrangement. You look down and see the intertwining of fungal threads and dust-caked roots and feel a little glow of pride at what has been achieved. You hear the entry lock of the dust house hiss open, and assuming it is Aki, turn to greet her. Wait, that's not Aki! We haven't seen Rico in a while. Leaper, I should have known you'd be here. Rico smiles her warm smile, leaning on her crutch. You must be one of the most green-fingered people on the station. <gasps> I am really good at growing stuff. We did lots of growing. Rico! Now, now, has it been so long? Yeah, it's been like two streams since I last saw you. She smiles a wry smile. No need for any drama. Hi, cat. How you doing? I literally gave you food before I started streaming, so I know that you're not starving. I know you're lying to me. I know you're lying to me. You're just being dramatic. I met some of the steppe refugees in the Greenway. They were gathering plants, and I confronted them. Turns out they were very friendly. Oh, jeez. Well, we just zoomed off at top speed. She must be feeling energetic. She smiles to herself. Rocky was very apologetic, but I told him they were welcome to anything they liked. She told me I'd be welcome to come see, and, well, I thought I'd take her up on the offer. She looks around the dust house with a strange hybrid ecosystem. I have to say, I'm glad I did. Hmm. Hmm. You no 
know Aki? A little. She pauses. She's a fine botanist and an even finer conversationalist. Two rare qualities on the station in my experience. Miko limps over to you. She holds out a hand. How about you take me on a tour? You take Rico's hand and walk her around the hybrid dust house. You show her how the steppe silk knots help provide a strong base for fungal and lechal growths, and how the dust mixes with the spores. You show her the different species of steppe tubers, and the way they feed the soil with nutrients that help herba herbaceous, I guess? Herbaceous? Herba herbaceous? I'm curious now. I got I got the herbaceous? 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 I must know now. Herbaceous. It's herbaceous. It's herbaceous. I was right the first time. I was wondering though. Hi, Chloe. Please notice me. Chloe! Dolby says, please notice me! She's not in the room anymore, but she totally heard that, okay? She already zoomed out. She's zooming around. I could hear her go like, whoosh, 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 whoosh. She got into the catnip, man. There was a... You show her the different species of step tubers and the way they feed the soil with nutrients that help herbaceous greenway plants thrive. She nods along, her eyes bright with ideas. He stops after a while, and gestures for you to sit together. I know something is happening with the eye, sleeper. She looks out at the plants. We all felt the flux event hit, and everyone is talking about what's next. I came out here to figure something out, to understand what I might do about it all. You glance at her and see the glossiness in her eyes. And I think I have decided... What you have done here, what Aki and the other steppe refugees have done here, is incredible. A whole new ecosystem, built from the strange, artificial changed remains of two worlds. But I am not of two worlds. I am of the eye. A tear runs down her cheek. Like it or not, I am entwined with the station. I'm old growth. I don't have that much time anymore. And it seems to accelerate with every cycle. He frowns. It blurs together. Separates. Overlaps. Comes back to me in strange ways. The time I do have. That's time I want to spend on the eye. In the greenway. Watching things grow. He wipes her cheek. One day I'll lie in those fields and not get back up. He smiles. The tear tracks down both cheeks. And when the green takes me, I'll be so glad. Oh. I mean, she just, she, what's the point of saying you could leave when she just said she made up her mind? She's already been thinking about it. Are we trying to change her mind? Thanks for the trade. You're welcome. Wait, I'm not a trade feely. I don't know what she's talking about. I'll miss you. Rico smiles. The feeling is mutual, sleeper. She wipes her eyes and turns to you. But that's enough of me blubbering on about it. She furrows her brow. What I want to know is what you what are you, uh, what I want to know is what you are planning. I don't know. Rico smiles. We all have to get to know ourselves, sleeper. To know what it is that drives us. I'm sure you'll decide to act in the manner you know. But you also have to ask yourself why it is so. He places a trembling hand on yours. Don't neglect that. Oh, she suddenly lifts both hands. Don't let me forget this. She reaches into her coat and pulls out a transparent bag of sporing club heads with carefully preserved root systems. I'd like these plant. I'd like to plant these. If you go, you'll need them. He looks down at her feet. And if you don't... Well, maybe another sleeper will benefit. He frowns. I can offer that, at least. Thank you. She nods. Don't thank me. These are yours by right. That's right. I went to the trouble to plant all those mushrooms and get those. Those are mine. 
Rico stands and limps over to a pile of mulch. She delicately takes the club heads out and beds them into the soil there, with precise, expert hands. You should go, sleeper. I'll be a while. She calls back, not looking away from the job at hand. See you around, he says it casually, but there's a note of finality to her speech. Uh, see you around. You turn and leave the dust house, cycling through the protective lock, back into the cool quiet of the ship. Aki is waiting for you. I'll miss you too. You know that I was reading that line of dialogue from the game, Dolby? I wasn't talking to you, I was talking to the game. I was totally ignoring you. <laughs> that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. It's beautiful. She is looking through the observation window and the green reflex in her eyes. Plants look happy together. She spots Rico with her hands in the soil. Ah, the botanist came. She shoots you a look. A friend of yours. We've been, we've been through a lot together. Something like that? She nods. She speaks beautifully about the Greenway. I should go in and welcome her. She pauses. Are you leaving us? For now. Aki sighs. The first of many goodbyes. She suddenly embraces you, wrapping you in her layers of rough cloth. She pulls back. I wish you a steady step. And a clear path. She smiles. A farewell from my world. I wish you the same. She nods and smiles one last warm smile before turning and entering the dust house. You watch as she walks inside, Rico turning with a smile to greet her. She kneels beside the old botanist and you see her pointing to the club heads, asking questions. You are unable to hear them, but despite that, you can easily imagine the measured, even tone laced with excitement that Rico is using to explain the club heads, the greenway, and much, much more. You turn, leaving them to their conversation. Your step is light, despite the burdens you carry and the smile Rico and Aki were sharing is somehow still on your lips as you depart. Interesting. Well, they're done. How oh, you got you guys? What we got going on with you guys? You're chopping some stuff off, right? There's gonna be security. I forgot you still had this game. I thought you meant to reel that. That was people. That's nice. <laughs> it's very nice. You expertly strip wires and components from the axis walls as you dismantle them. The crews are impressed. You manage to convince two rival crews to work together, refitting their ships. Both benefit from the other's expertise. Damn, I got positive three times in a row. I was looking for the neutral text and it didn't happen. Fine, I won't miss you either. In fact, the avatar I'm here for, not you. Oh. What are you gonna do now? What are you gonna do now? You got us guys? It's right. Get mad. Go, okay, okay. I don't want you to get mad. Not so good dice to that. Bring her back right now! Boo! There we go. I only ever got positive responses on this one. The docking axis is little more than a shell. Everything that could have been pulled from its interior, every arm not used for docking, has been cut away. What remains is a spartan void with a patchwork of flooring that allows movement. 
piles of unusable material are tucked away in corners, but almost everything else has been cleared out. You haven't seen Peter since you last spoke, and now you are realizing that you probably never will. There are plans to be made, escapes to plot, the shadow of hearth to escape. On the cycle the flotilla leaves, these ships will disperse too, the moons of embers spinning out on different orbits. The chaos has become a quiet diligence now, as the time for departure is so near. Crews cross the axis from ship to ship at speed, bringing supplies or device. Perhaps meeting up to discuss travel vectors in hushed tones, or to debate why they haven't left yet, and whether they should. Among these singer crews, recognizable for their specialist clothing and often shorn heads, you see the occasional refugee, a paying passenger, or a replacement engineer or pilot perhaps, come from the eye to seek fortune with the singers. Mm. Oh yeah, it doubled it. Most of the crews have two or three of these additions. Some more, and you can't help but wish that. Whatever reason brings them to throw their lot in with the singer crews, they will have safe passage. You feel a strange attachment to these citizens of the eye, setting out for the first time. And then one of them catches your eye, crossing the axis with a crew, carrying a large bag and a nervous look. Whoa, who's this? Paula, you freeze for a second. What is she doing here? She glances around, feeling your eyes on her, and catches your eye. Her face brightens immediately. Bleeper! Tala mutters something to her crew and rushes over, dumping the large bag at your feet and embracing you without thinking. Good to see you. She pulls back. And you! She smiles, but then it quickly fades as she realizes the context in which you are meeting. Blech. She sheepishly glances at her bag. Sleeper! She pauses. I'm... She pauses again, holding her arms defensively. I'm going to the Starward Belt. She waits for your response nervously. I don't understand. He sighs. <sighs> oh my gosh, this is a part of how, how I don't have to explain all this. Do you remember me mentioning my family, Sleeper? My brother? You think back to your old Girol blurred conversations in the back of the Bantheon. Actually, I think I do remember. And her, like, parents dead and her brother's off somewhere. He came here with me, with my family, when we were little. Just after we left Sinza. He bites her lip. He left when we were both teenagers, and jumped on some spacer crew heading to the Starward Belt. I'm... She sighs. I'm an idiot. She shakes her head. And I'm going after him. He looks down, not sure what to add. That makes sense. He looks at you. It does? She laughs nervously. I'm not so sure anymore. I really don't know if it makes sense or if it's the right thing. But ever since I heard that was where the refugee flotilla was going, well, I couldn't stop thinking about him. Oh, uh, I mean, how did you hear is pretty obvious. Like, it's the talk of the town right now, man. What happens to the bar? Someone will have to run it. She leaves a long pause. I mean, I can ask Francis. He'd be happy to. Or one of the others, she blurts out. And, of course, if you are leaving with the flotilla or someone else, it'd be totally okay. You wouldn't need to say yes. It's no pressure. It's fine, whichever way I was just thinking. Yeah. I'm not sure. Tala nuns. Sure, sure. I mean, I just sprung it on you. But, er... She glances at the crew she was walking with, who are chatting a little way away. Little way away, way away, way away, way away, way There's not exactly much time. So, considering that, she grabs the key hanging around her neck. The key to the Bontheon. Do you want to do it? <gasps> My options are yes, no, or no. It's one yes and two no's. <laughs> She 
second, no. Wait, why can't we do it, though? Yeah, plus. Wait, you can't just say no, then yes. Are we about to die? Let's all perish to the flux together. Hmm. Maybe that's the third ending. What if we let the time run out? We agree, then we've agreed to stay here. That's true. And I wanted to try doing both endings, so I kind of have to be non-committed. That said, it's possible this dialogue right here doesn't actually matter, and it's only the final choice that matters. And this is just blah, 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 blah. I can't. I like how I can't doesn't have a period at the end, but the other ones do. F12. Ella nods. I get it. She tucks the key around her neck inside her top. I always do this. Leave everything so late. Make decisions quickly so I can't change my mind. She kicks out her bag. It's not on you. She looks up, smiling. If you're going to leave, well, maybe we'll see each other out there. She looks out towards the stars. That'd be nice. Maybe once I find my brother. She stops herself. She looks back at you and smiles. I better get going. She nods at the crew nearby. Not a good start to keep my guys waiting. She lifts the bag onto her shoulder. It looks down the curb of the eye, towards the overlook. Thanks again, sleeper, for everything you helped me with. She nods. I wouldn't have been able to leave if I hadn't made things work here. She adjusts the bag. Dad wouldn't have let me. See you around. He nods. Hope so. And Tala turns, heading back to the crew who will carry her to the Starward belt. You watch her go, and despite the departure, it is hard to feel sad about Tala. You know her energy will carry her forward, and you hope her brother is somewhere on that bright path. You imagine yourself leaving, like Tala, unburdened perhaps, or maybe carrying new burdens. It is hard to tell. Either way, it will be time to decide soon enough. Uh-oh, you see that? It's going to be time to decide soon enough. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Well, that's all the leaving preparations done. Now the not leaving preparations. You sit with Peek and talk through their ideas. One by one, you eliminate the possibilities. Perhaps in time, you will find you'll find a solution. <clears throat> Ooh, I got one nice roll. You show the latest data to Peek, and their eyes light up. They have seen something, but what is it? My energy. The pressure is too high. Both you and Peek want to pace the ship nervously, unable to focus on the problem. Fine, I'll go get some food from Emphasis Doll and come back tomorrow, you piece of shit. Oh, there you I've only worked there about two times. Oh, the bar? We helped her get some mushrooms so she could make her own gear roll. Alright, we gotta feed our cat.
I don't have any more scrap. I think I'll have to start using my stabilizers if I want to keep the full dice roll. Or get more scrap. You know. Crazy thought, right? Wow. He beckons you over to the wide over the wide mess table where they have set up a terminal. The hours of bleary-eyed work have left you both drained, and Peek looks ready to collapse. You slide onto the curved couch beside him, or the something dark and malevolent filling their screen like an oil stain. Ugh. A shadow protocol. That sounds pretty spooky. I'm sick of looking at this thing. I don't want to look at this thing no more. Stay silent. Um, let, let's say. The Shadow Protocol. Not quite. Peek's eyes seem to glitter in the screen light. This isn't what you think, sleeper. Not by a long shot. You look again at the screen, leaning in close to the dark, curved shape to see its texture. You see whorls and currents like a river. A dark flow unlike the Shadow Protocol's dark tangle. You know exactly what this is. You have swum in this river, almost drowned in its shifting flow. It is the Gardener's Chorus, the dark cloud which blankets the Greenway's networks, the bio-organic morass of a fa malfunctioning protocol grown vast and strange. You mean that place we were at when we were doing Rico's end and stuff? That sounds exciting. This right here is probably why they recommend not doing the DLC till late game. Because they're bringing up stuff you'd only know right now if you did those endings, right? If you did this as early as you could access it, you'd be like, who the fuck's the gardener? The gardener. He glances at you. How do you... They pause. Have you met them? I have! He shakes their head. Incredible. Then perhaps you won't be surprised by what I am about to propose. He meets your eye. Everything I have tried to do to contain the Shadow Protocol has been a failure. It slips through any containment, absorbs any countermeasure. That, unfortunately, is an unavoidable fact. And yet, the eye still spins. The Shadow Protocol is being slowed, partially contained. It has spread across the station, as we have seen, but in reduced pockets, in fragments. So I started to look outside of our test cases, outside of these fragments we have been poking and prodding in our little lab. Peek smiles. And look what I found! Peek taps a key on their terminal and you realize the screen is showing a recording of the data flow inside the eye's networks, sampled from hundreds of points around the greenway. You watch as a subtle shift occurs at the edge of the flowing dark curve that blankets the greenway. Something spreading like an ink stain, somehow darker than black, it bleeds across. The Shadow Protocol. Now watch! Peek eagerly points at the screen. You see something strange, a fizzing at the edge of the shadow, a sparking, and then it is gone. And beneath, for a moment, a millisecond, you see into the networks of the greenway. You are reminded of an image you had forgotten, of pulling a plant from its pot and seeing a bone-white root ball where you expected to see dark soil. The white connections writhe like worms, and then it is gone, the dark flow closing up as quickly as it opened. What did I just see? Hope, Peek sighs, wrapped up in something terrible. You think back to your meeting with the gardener, to that sense of something old and horrid and inhuman to its core. Peek excitedly starts to explain. This is the only chance we have, the only countermeasure we have seen. In the moment it opened in the moment it opened, I detected something. A centralized intelligence with the local ID gardener. This protocol, this system, whatever it is, can protect its network from the shadow protocol. But if it stays in the greenway, the eye will still fall. The station's systems are too exposed, too spread across the hub. The shipyards, the spokes, 
He glances away. So we need to give the gardener more room so they can protect everything. But like, hey, yeah, you can go this way. Okay. The only way to break it, is, or the only way is to break it open. To spread the enti entity's network access. Wait. To spread the entity's network access. It. Huh? Huh? Network access it. Expand it. Huh? Is that an F12? There's my brain derp. I think access is supposed to be across. Spread the entity's network across it. Expand it. That would make sense. I think that's supposed to be across. Like spread it around, you know? F fucking 12. Either that or get rid of the extra it after access to spread the access, you know, expand it. I you can either do across or chop off the uh, extra it that's not needed there after access. One, whichever way you'd want to fix it. You can't just have both though, man. Oh, there, there be typos in my text video game. This game has quite a f like like very few of them honestly though. I was pretty impressed like a text game like this having so few typos. I can't believe you called me a burden. I am your pro burden now. <laughs> oh, how am I gonna do this? The only way is to break it open, to spread the entity's network access, expand it, somehow. Peek pauses. You want to let the gardener out? Peek stands up and walks away a little. They lean against the countertop. Their head hanging so low that their long hair touches the work surface. You hear them breathing deeply. I don't know, sleeper. They lift their head. I really don't know. It's okay. He turns. Is it? They are angry. Uh-oh, why are they angry? Is it okay that we have to decide this? To attempt this alone? You know as well as Peek that this is it. You know it because over the past cycles you have run every simulation, every possibility you could think of and still come up with nothing. You have stared a hole into your screen and dreamt of that black shadow, creeping in at the edges of your vision. Peek recognizes the look in your eyes, the potent cocktail of resignation and anger. Let's say we do this, Peek begins, eyeing you carefully. What do we need? They begin to answer their own question, thinking out loud. I suppose we'd need to do two things. Find a way to limit or control the gardener's spread, and then reconnect the greenway. Eek starts pacing. The idea is coming quickly now. Controlling the spread means preparing the station. Limit the gardener's network to key systems. We don't want it taking everything. We just need it to protect the station's core functionality. Then we need to reconnect the greenway. Hook it back up to the main line of the network. Those systems we prepared, they should connect, and Gardener will spread along the paths we prepared. At least, that is my theory, Pete grimaces. But if we don't prepare correctly, the Gardener might not spread, or it might spread to everything. He closes their eyes. And after that, things might get worse. That's the risk. Peek nods. One hell of a risk. Peek sits back at the terminal and brings up a map of the eye. Rotational control at the hub. Life support at the free spoke. Power routing at the Haven Aid shipyards. They stab at the map with each one, marking them in red. And those are places I gotta go. Then there's the central core. As I understand, it is somewhere on the rim. I need to find it. They push their hair out of their face. We need the gardener in all these places. Peek pauses. But how are we going to do that? 
transplant the greenway or bait the gardener's attention? Hmm. You sorry you didn't mean it? Couldn't do it without you. Oh, that's goddamn right. Plant the greenway, maybe? Peek smiles. Of course. The gardener needs plants to care for. That is what their protocol dictates. They must have been part of the farming management systems of the eye, back when Solheim built it. We seed greenway plants into those systems, and the gardener will seek them out. Protect them. He stares at the map of the eye. It's a wild idea, but it could work. But, they pause. We'll need a way into those systems. Haven Age have most of them locked down for safety purposes. We can't just walk in. I know a guy. We know a guy. It might be Fang. He raises his eyebrow. Someone in the Haven Age systems team? You nod. After everything he dragged you through, you feel like Fang still owes you. Time to pay him a visit. Okay, well. He looks at you sideways. I guess we should pay him a visit. Lead the way. You both leave the ship, carried forward by the excitement of the plan, and an eagerness to not look at the details too closely. You push any lingering questions to the back of your mind. Time to head to Fang's Bay. Didn't, didn't you say, like, a stream or two ago? About how Peek and Fang are pretty much the same dude? The same person? And now we got, we got, both of them are gonna meet up and they're gonna work together. Well, he's gonna be down here near the beginning area. You don't even know what I mean? I totally know what you mean. Hmm, where is Fat? I can't believe Tala left this place. Where the heck did he heck he be? Should we check up here? Hmm. Oh, thanks, Bay. Like. This is Bliss's bad. It's been a while since I did Fang, but he was toward the front, wasn't he? Ash Doors table, blah blah blah. Oh yeah. Wait, I have to do dice just to find him? Come on! What? Will you find your friend? Roll some freaking dice. Fill this circle. That's some more notes, huh? Find Fang. Fang isn't in his bay, and you know, and no one in the office uh, or offices upstairs seems to know where he is. Your lone clue is an out-to-lunch note. A difficult man. Fang is both never where he says he'll be and always late. While this is no, surpri no surprise, now is not the moment for wasting time. You dig around Fang's bay and find some notes that mention the flux. What is he working on? That's it. No more wasting time. Peek sighs and pulls out their slate. They crack open a box on the side of the base shutter and wire the slate to what's inside. Maybe your friend has a Haven Age pass card or something inside. Peek shoots you a glance. Something they wouldn't mind if we borrow. Let's wait. Peek doesn't look up. We haven't got time to wait. They sigh. Coming here was a mistake. 
After a few tense moments, the shutter jerks and begins grinding open, the noise making you jump. Let's get inside. He glances around. Quickly. You slip into the dark of the bay, punctuated by the blinking lights of Feng's piles of servers, somehow even more disordered than before. Eek makes a beeline for the desk at the center, scattered with tools and components. They flick on a lamp and stare at the mess. Are you sure this person can help us? Uh, yes! You're interrupted by the sound of footsteps from the entrance. Someone has come in behind you. Peek freezes. Aha! I could, I could swear I closed the shutter when I left. Feng leans on a stack of servers near the entrance. Must be getting forgetful. He grins at you. Feng! The very same. Feng smiles. Feng raises an eyebrow. Thought you'd come and rob an old friend. Is that the plan? We need your help. Feng nods. You're here about the flux. Peek nods and su is suddenly giving Feng their full attention. Feng smiles, pleased with himself. I guessed as much. I saw changes in the old system architectures almost immediately. Some of them have been running since the first days of the station. And so when I saw new patterns, shifts in logic, I knew something must have happened. These past cycles, I've been doing a total inventory of the core systems, from the hub to the rim. He grins. I've surprised myself, to be honest. I didn't think I had it in me. Ick seems unamused. And what did you find? Bang sighs. That's the thing. There's something all twisted up in the systems and protocols, but every time I look at it... It disappears. Peek finishes. Bang turns to you. Do they always do that? Peek ignores him. <laughs> it's a shadow protocol. It masks itself somehow, bedding into the gaps between the systems in the negative space. It is slowly filling every system in the station, slowly taking over, and we need to stop it. You need to grant us access to all the core systems of the station. Rotational control, life support. Fang holds up a hand. Whoa, 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 slow down there. I don't even know your name. Fang shakes his head. And you are asking for the keys to the castle? Can't be done. A bit loud. Fang, it's me. Fang pauses and glances between both of you. How long have you known this one, sleeper? I know I owe you, but I also know that you trust too easily. Sorry to say it. He cuts in. I can vouch for myself. I came to the eye on the run on the run from the XPR colony Hawthorne, with the intent to keep running until we hit the Starward belt. But since I have been here, I've done everything in my power to protect this place. I have helped to stabilize the refugee flotilla to investigate the flux, to identify and make a plan to purge the Shadow Protocol from the station's systems. Meanwhile, Haven Age has done everything to stop and slow these actions. I have proven myself as a friend to the people of this station, not the administration, many times over, and I will not be doubted by someone who wears the badge of this corrupt administration. He fixes Fang with a hard look. Wait, I mean corrupt. Corrupt administration. He's, he's so grumpy. Bang looks down as, as his Haven Age jacket and shrugs. This is all I have in my wardrobe. Dave is like, Nope, sorry, I didn't find it. I didn't get the other one. I'm oh, sorry, I don't have any um, Solheim jackets in, in stock. I only got Haven Age ones. Oh, that's what. Heart, please, no burn. I wouldn't do that. Look, I have no love for the council either, friend, but someone has to run this place. And that someone is me. Fang walks over to the workbench where you are both standing and digs a slate out of the pile of tools. You want to prove yourself? Show me. He grabs the slate and you recognize the tangled form of a flux node on the screen. He immediately starts tapping away at it, its tendrils unwinding, and the shadow, just slightly delayed, slipping out of sight. Fang leans in. Interesting, he says to himself. Before long, Peek has unfolded the system completely, and it lies splayed out like an unwound ball of string. At the center, with nowhere left to hide, is the dark stain of the Shadow Protocol, visible for all to see. 
What now? Feng asks, his eyes fixed on the screen. How do you kill it? Uh, uh, let Peek answer. We're not going to talk for him. He, 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 I don't know what they're doing. There's one entity on the station that we have seen purging the shadow. The gardener. Feng frowns. Who's that? Some Greenway hacker? He glances at you. More like an avatar of the Greenway itself. You explain the gardener to Fang, the feeling of descending into the flowing river of consciousnesses. You explain the networked chorus, the non-human collective of voices. You tell him of the farming AI's offer to you, to be networked into the chorus, dissolved in its flow. And you explain that by granting it access to the AI's major networks, you hope to reinforce them. Fang is silent for a moment. And you want to let this thing out? He shakes his head. That's the kind of stupid plan I'd dream up. He pauses. I like it, he smiles. This place is rammed with weird protocols and forgotten intelligences anyway. What's one more ghost in the machine? We'd try to limit it, of course, Peek explains. That's why we want your help to access the eye's major systems, to seed some of the gardener's spores into them to draw the gardener's focus to those places. Bang whistles. So the way we save the eye is by growing mushrooms in all the server stacks? He glances at you. Leaper, congratulations. You found someone weirder than you. Pete goes to argue, but Fang holds up a hand. In it is an all systems Haven Age pass card with his picture on it. Take it before I change my mind. That's it? That's it. Feng gives you a look. In all honesty, sleeper, I was on my way back here to start tearing the place down. The shadow protocol had me spooked. So if you're telling me you have figured out a way we might fight it? He looks at Peek. No matter how crazy? Then I'm glad to help. He smiles a tight smile. Come with us! No, sleeper. He looks away. I have to keep on with my work here. Strengthen those systems. Back up the data. The worst comes to the worst. I'll need to rebuild. I won't let this place die. The last pieces of my parents are here. Among the data. Oh. Goodbye, Fang. Fang embraces you firmly. Stay safe, sleeper. You take the card and leave the bay with Peek. Once you are outside, they stop you. We should split up. Peek looks worried. We've wasted enough time as it is. Head to the facilities in the hub, the free spoke and the far side of the shipyard. Seed the gardener there. See head hub of free spoke if you are. Hi. I'm going to go find the core se core control center that's somewhere on the rim. I hold up their slate. I'll send you a message on your slate when I have something. Good luck. They squeeze your shoulder and you exchange fearful looks. You know, deep down, that Peek isn't sure this will work. But they have decided to act, to move with confidence, and for that confidence you are very thankful. That's a good point. Will this even work? Who knows? Power routing, key station facility. Everything. What? I need spores. I need three spores for that. So the other one I need three spores for too, right? Life support. I need three spores for that. And there's one up there, right? I'm probably need three spores for that. I need to get nine spores first. Silly me using my spores to plant mushrooms. Oh, there I have to do that, apparently. Mm, try a reroll. Ow, I made it worse. Crap. Got nothing. Just fuck you today, apparently. I gotta spend the next day just, uh, collecting spores. Amazing. Fabulous. 10 out of 10. I 
My clock's almost halfway out, man. I'll feed my cat. Bop, bop. Hmm, not having any scrap. I was gonna lose a square there. See, that would have been a beautiful six I didn't get. We're halfway doomed, man. All right. Why can't it just be inputting dice like everything else? Why well, I gotta go get spores first? All right. I'll dare the. Not this one. Class, it was just two at a time. Go draw my dice. I got ten spores now. Are you Twitch TV user? Profilia. I am fabulous. Got some tasty food. Got some tasty spores. Hey, I'm not eating the spores. up shipyard all right need power routing implanting greenway spores into the system here should bait the gardener into extending their protection to this vital system system seeded to have any hope of controlling or limiting the gardener's spread core systems of the eye need to be seeded the garden is implanted now it must grow oh i didn't need nine I thought I needed three for each one, but I only needed one. Well, all I needed three spores, not that. Well, now I'm super prepared. Seed life support. Implanting spores from the greenway into the station's life support control systems feels like madness. Is this really the solution? Rotational control. Key station facility. Whoa. Seed control center. Spores from the greenway implanted here will seed a garden that the gardener will be forced to protect. At least that's the theory. You didn't? You traded your fries for something tastier. Delicious. As you leave, the slate peak gave you chirps insistently. You check and see a message. Found a possible entry to the core facility in the low end. Meet me there, AS- or meet me here, ASAP. Peak. A blinking marker gives their position as on the free spoke side of the main block. Better head to the low end. Peak, cautious spacer. His, his symbol thing just looks like an ant to me, sorry. You arrive at the coordinates given by Peak Slate, a rundown but active corner of the low end, where a short glass-roofed alley turns off from one of the main thoroughfares. You wait in the mouth of the alley, leaning against the wall and watching the street life go by. Children hop across grids scratched into metal floor plates, playing games of their own devising. 
while all the residents sit and talk or play tabla. It's called hopscotch, man. That's what they're playing in space hopscotch. At least it was as midly tasty. Plus L mildly tasty. That's excellent. It is hard to believe that all this is at threat. It seems so concrete, so real. How can some intangible protocol erase all this? As you are watching, a voice calls out to you from one of the tabla tables set up along the way. It's Castor! We haven't seen him since Lem and Mina's ending, have we? You move a little closer and recognize the sitting player immediately. Castor sits, tabla pieces and board ready in front of him, smiling at you. Sleeper, my partner has not arrived for our usual game. Come, please, take her place. He beckons you over, standing and nudging you to sit down with him. Our rematch is in order. You owe me a game. Almost immediately, Castor begins the game. Everyone on the eye knows how to play tabla. The methodol methodical movement of the counters across their triangular points already fit for the rhythm of life on the ramshackle space station. Most games begin in the same way, with each player moving with independence, focused only on achieving their optimal early game setup. But there is a moment in each game where it becomes necessary to notice the other player, to anticipate the crossing of the counters across the board. A point of contact when routine becomes negotiation, and negotiation becomes conflict. At this, as this moment arrives, this subtle shift in the texture of the interaction Castor begins to speak. I find myself surprised by you continually, sleeper. He looks over his glasses at you. The way you conduct yourself, for example, suggests an anxious refrain, a defensive protective quality. But in your tabla game... He pauses to move a counter. I see only risk. What are you talking about? Risk, sleeper. I'm talking about risk. Risk is, of course, necessary to play Tabla. To move a piece is to expose it, but it should be done with calculation, with proper analysis. Then, if the piece is taken, Castor moves a counter, taking one of yours with a practice swap, placing it beside the board. It is already accounted for. But you move forward with abandon, as if risk was just a secondary effect of action, a consequence, not its primary guide. He gestures for you to take your turn. A cause. I play my way. That's right. I play my my way the pro way. Not bops. That's right, that's right, that's right. He smiles. Indeed, indeed. That is all I seek. Move your piece. This locks you into being reactive, if you don't mind me saying so. You're responding, which means you are being led. He leans back to consider the board. This place, it mirrors you, sleeper. It is also reactive. It was born from a crisis, the collapse of Solheim, and ever since it has been reacting without any central guiding principle. No analysis, no calculation. Just look at our refugee crisis, for example. It is all reaction, all risk-taking, and little risk calculation. At first, I found the chaos enlivening, especially when trying to track its outcomes. But now I find it exhausting. He laughs. It always amuses me that this place is literally spun from the rim. Below this very stack of habitation blocks is the most important control facility on the eye. Spun from the rim. He laughs again. What better metaphor could you find for disorder? His face drops. But why am I telling you that? That facility is precisely why you are here. He smiles an unsettlingly warm smile. Ugh. You feel a shiver through your body, as if something has changed in the air. How do you know about that? I mean, I could get up and leave, but then, then I wouldn't get more conversational. No words come out of your mouth. You feel removed from yourself. Watching from behind frosted glass. Your eyes, dart, your eyes dart side to side. Inertia sets in. Castor is still smiling. The risk you are planning to take here, sleeper, is not yours to take. 
Castor's tone is unshifted. He speaks as if this is still some casual conversation between passing acquaintances. You are leaping towards a chaotic outcome with no respect for risk. You see, calculating outcomes, that's my specialty. That's why I am here. I was hired as a conduit for risk, as a collector of data that might pertain to its arrival. He removes his glasses to clean them, and you see something flicker across their surface. A shimmering stream of characters. The system, the station, is already theirs. Solheim's collapse meant a corporate fire sale. Assets changed hands. My employers, Senate Stat, bought out the entire system, and for the past decades have been its one valid owner. He polishes his glasses diligently. I've never heard of these guys. But to possess this system, the H1 system, he pauses, Elion to you, well, that is a matter of risk, of how much force, how much cost, how much conflict a clearance would take. He replaces his glasses. That risk must be calculated against the favorable outcome. In short, how much is this place worth to us? <sighs> Are they the ones responsible for doing the flock submit? For a long time, the answer was nothing. H1 could offer nothing that would warrant or could, ugh, that would warrant the risk. But the markets change, the demands shift, and Senate stat, we analyze, we follow, we respond. He puts his glasses back on his face. Ugh. H1 is about to become the most important system in this part of the galaxy. He glances around. Lone con can whatever channel operating within range or of seven or so newly surveyed resource rich systems. The frontier town that feeds the gold rush, so to speak. So here we are, reevaluating the risk, reclaiming our property, starting up the con channel and clearing the way for what comes next. He sits back looking at the board. He gestures. Your move. Hey, Deus Corrande, what's up? What's happening? How's it going? How you doing tonight? Astor's secret alter ego is the big meat. Ah, oh, man. I thought this guy was just playing games. Actually, didn't he put some sort of spy chip in us? Because we were going to go on Lemon Mina's ship, and then we didn't do that, but I'm pretty sure we still got the spy chip in us. Mm, you will kill thousands! You managed to force out the word. Castor looks a little surprised. I am an analyst, sleeper. I will do nothing. He shakes his head. Senate stat as a corporate body will take the required actions. <laughs> okay. I personally won't do anything, so that's not my doing. Of course, I do not need to explain myself to you. But in the role as an analyst, in my calculations, I see great promise in you, in your ability to enter systems, to shift them to your will. Not every sleeper has this capacity. I assume you know that? He smiles. It truly is a wonderful happenstance of SNARP's technology. I imagine they, even they are not fully aware of it. He takes his move, claiming another of, of your pieces, and as you watch, you realize the inevitability of his victory. I will make you an offer, to come willingly or come by force. This station will collapse. We can be sure of that. But your ability to work with data, well, for an analyst, that is very intriguing. He pauses to push his glasses up his nose. Very intriguing indeed. He glances around. Come with me as a collaborator or as a prisoner. Consider the risk. On one hand, almost certain death. On the other, a possible future. Analyst or not, you must see it. Speak now, sleeper. The game is forfeit. You must see that. He holds out a hand. You are of value. You are needed. You feel a slight release in the inertia that grips you. Enough to allow you to speak. To respond. You realize that you are already in Castor's hands. That you cannot move from this place if you wanted. Sleeper? You hear the familiar voice above the crowds. Sleeper, I'm here. I like how he's the one who's late. You are unable to turn your head to see Peak. 
but you notice Castor's eyes following them as they come up from behind you. Then you see Castor's eyes glance down towards his hands concealed beneath the table. Uh oh. Leaper! He comes around the front of you and waves a hand to your, in your face. We were supposed to be meeting, remember? They glance at Castor. Sorry, am I interrupting something? You cannot speak. Castor shoots Peek a wide smile. Hello, you must be a friend of Sleeper. You watch one of his hands lift close to his body, some dark shape concealed in it. A weapon. You try to scream, to shout, but Castor's attention remains partially on you, and while it does, you can do nothing. He glances at your static form. What's happening, sleep here? Sleeper? They put a hand on your shoulder. Are you okay? I'm not okay! As Peek stares into your eyes, you see Castor behind, his hand lifting, the dark object unfolding, and in the split moment it does, you feel his attention shifting to Peek, shifting away from you. As you do, you feel the inertia lifting, and you know this is the only moment you will have to act. Uh-oh. We gotta shove Peek out of the way. He's about to get murder rossed. You lurch forward wildly, like a sprung trap. Your head strikes Peek's chest and then carries them back into Castor. Somewhere are some digital screeches echoing through the walkway. They tumble together, and the object in Castor's hand skitters across the floor. You realize the screech is you. You get to your feet, grab Peek, and run. Whoa. You run as hard as you can, the scream chasing you down the walkway as you shove through the residence, Peek dragged behind. You run from the cold grip of whatever power Castor had over you, the signals that locked you into this body of yours, that broke the connections, and crawled up your spine. Eventually you stop, both you and Peek collapsing, heaving, breathing into the cold metal floor. When they are able to speak, Peek asks you to explain, and you tell them everything Castor told you. About Senate stat, about their claim on the Helion system, their reactivation of the CAN channel, the Helion system's growing importance. It flows out of you in desperate gulps, unable to believe your own mouth as you hear these words coming back to you. All you feel is the need to push back against the cold hand on your shoulder, the vast cold eye that has turned to look at the system. The ghost limbs of corporate control that are extending their reach. Eek is quiet for a long time. Then they speak. We have to finish this, sleeper. They meet your eye. We have to complete the seeding of the systems. We have to set Gardner free. I mean, uh, uh, we could just let let this, uh, the, the analyst guy win, right? Right, 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 right. Uh, they've made their calculations. They're fine with some people dying. They'll, they'll, they'll profit from it, right? You're right! You're right! Let's do it! If the choice is between Gardner and these people, I will choose Gardner every time. Their eyes are cold and steely. I would choose anything over them. You stand together. The final control facility is here. I found it. Peek looks at you grimly. I can take you as soon as you are ready. Time's almost up. This is the only shot you'll have. Time's almost up! Oh no! The so peak. That's right, that's right. Right, peak is so peak. Ophelia! What's up, Toby? Control facility, Erlen's Eye Control Center. Let me guess, I need dice. I knew it! I need dice. Gotta go to sleep. Hack facility? There are powered terminals in the derelict part of the low end. Accessing them is dangerous, but will be faster than wandering. Explore facility? To find the core of the facility, you'll need to, uh, to trace the path between Peak's backdoor entry and the derelict levels below. And they're both for crack the facility. The facility Peak has led you to is decaying, derelict, but they promise the core is still active. You just have to find it. Well, I can't do anything now because I don't have any dice. I have to go to sleep. We gotta feed our cat and go to sleep. I thought I was gonna need nine spores, so I spent all my dice. Meow. 
Meow. Let's see. You find an old Solheim map terminal and manage to boot it back up. A skeletal map of the facility unfolds for you. You find an emergency access elevator that is still powered and descend further towards the core. Gonna need an extra day. I rolled a two and got a two. Wow, amazing. You forgot? Well, that didn't work out well. Rip. It'll take two days to fill that. Hopefully, I don't have a bunch more stuff. Well, I guess it's time to uh, feed my cat. And uh, take a stabilizer so I have all my dice. I've got, I'm gonna have four more days after that here. Four more days! Four more days! Time limits, man. Wow, what amazing dice I got today. Amazing. Astounding. How about fuck you, game? Ah, that's much better. Now you guys are cool again. Woohoo! Fleeper, here! Pete calls to you from across the flickering corridor. An elevator to the core! They smile. This is it! It has been a long set of cycles, hunting for a path through the derelict layers of old Solheim offices and workshops. But finally, here it is, the path down to the core. You rush over to peek. As you do, the doors grind open, the dingy-looking elevator flickering as they do. You look at Peek, who nervously gestures for you to get in. Uh, step in. The elevator bounces a little, but stays stable. You glance back to see Peek watching you, nervously. They follow you in, sheepishly. Just a little nervous. He's hoping the elevator you know, doesn't fucking break and they go crash into the ground. Peek reaches over and punches the button for the lowest level, flinching a little as the doors grind closed. The elevator sets off, screeching through the floors as it does at an unsettlingly loud volume. I'd feel more comfortable if we spoke. Peek raises their voice over the noise. It's not going to be a short trip. Honestly, I don't really care how Ash is doing. She's stupid. Have you heard of Senate stat? Eek thinks. Maybe once. They frown. Could have been mentioned in an XPR news packet. The kind of central administration sent out to us. Something about market analytics, I think. They shake their head. When you have spent so much time trying to forget your past, this stuff isn't easy to dredge up. Fine, I guess we'll ask how Ash was doing. Beak pauses. I was thinking more like small talk. Elevator talk. They sigh. <laughs> I didn't want to talk about big stuff like that, huh? She is... Packing. They rub their eyes. Once Ash has set her mind on something, well, you know her now. You know what I mean. The screeching of the elevator fills the silence. Can she per be persuaded to stay, or will you leave with her, or will I leave with her, I don't know. It takes for a moment. I don't know, sleeper. I honestly don't know. Part of me wants to run, to keep running for as long as I can. I am used to that. But another part is done with that. Is done with denying my past, my history. If I ever want to feel complete, to feel settled... Don't I need to somehow re resolve the person I was with the person I am now? 
he goes quiet, and you do too. There are too many possible questions, too many possibilities before you. It just seems easier to get on with the task at hand, and leave the consequences for later. The elevator screams to a stop, and the doors ping open with a strangely cheerful beep. You glance at Peek. Time to move on. Beep! Beep, 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 beep. You arrived at your destination, and you didn't crash and burn. Beep, 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 beep. You both walk out into an atrium, still lit by some ragged-looking light panels on the ceiling, once simulating a summer sky, now degraded into a flickering blue and white tapestry of glitches. Peek crosses quickly, making a beeline for the large doors on the far side, where you can make out a fading sign in massive peeling letters. Central Control! Whoa! You follow, helping them le lever, lever, whatever, lever open the partially powered doors until the motors kick in and they spring to life, thudding open. You and Peek tumble through, across the damp metal. As you stand, you are greeted by flickering lights, thousands of them. A vast cylindrical stack of servers, processors, and transmitters dominates the center of the room, its flickering LEDs reflected in the scattered puddles that surround it. Despite the decay, the warped panels and water leaks, it is still running, just as it has for decades and decades, since the station was first spun up. You wonder how long it has been since anyone has been in this room. Probably quite a long time. You exchange wide-eyed looks with Peak. This place is a still-living piece of history. Whoa! What is this place? Peek stares. One of the central facilities of the station. The primary one for the rim, it looks like. They shake their head. The heart of this place. Peek takes a handful of mulch out from a small bag. It glitters with spores. Now we seed this place. They cross to the server and start packing the mulch deep into the machinery, pushing fistfuls deep into gaps in the paneling, laying it across hardware. As you watch them doing this, you feel a tug, a thread pulling at you. You approach the vast piece of cylindrical hardware that Peek is stuffing mulch into. You run your hands across its plated metal surface and watch the lights blink in response. As you pass, you hear a whirring, like a physical disc starting up. Let's listen. The whirring shifts alternating, speeding up, slowing down, and as you listen, you hear it modulate into a voice. Bleeper. You freeze. You are here. For a moment, you are afraid, but something in the tonality of the voice is familiar. Navigator. We haven't seen Navigator in ages. Not since we saved Navigator's digital derriere. And took out the killer protocol. Another drive spins up, and another, giving the voice a richer, multitonal sound. I had forgotten what it felt like to speak like this. The drive skips. There is a certain quality to it. A certain physicality. What are you doing here? The drives squawk in unison. Did you imagine the flux, the shadow protocol, that they were just a problem for the people of this station? High whining begins. They are all the more dangerous to us. I mean, that makes sense. It's a big threat to their digital selves, right? I have been in hiding once more, jumping from network to network to avoid the shadow as it eats up nodes. A low rumble. I had thought my hiding days were done. For the moment, I have found myself a safe haven here in the core. A shadow has yet to breach this facility, although that is a temporary state of affairs. The rumble stops. My predictions do not point to good outcomes. That's why we are here. You explain to Navigator about Peak's plan, about Gardner's resistance to the shadow, and how by seeding key systems you will protect them from its advance. The drives hum thoughtfully as you speak. A desperate plan. The drives were. But appropriate given the probability of total collapse. I am not sure what will be worse for us. Hiding from the erasure of the Shadow Protocol, or the assimilation of Gardner. 
The drive pa drives pause to reset. But we owe you our freedom. I will do what I can to guide the gardener into the systems you have seeded. A pause. It is correct to do so. Thank you. The drive squeak in affirmation. You have notable persistence, sleeper. Even with such poor probabilities of success, I will be curious to see the outcome. The drive squeal. The motor's giving out. Oh, no! This cannot be sustained much longer. Go, I will be fine. I'll be fine! A final squeak of affirmation, and then the drive skitter and slow to a halt. You step back from the towering cylinder, staring at this vast piece of Solheim hardware. This whole place is built from ghosts, you think. From old protocols and company hardware. From engines that drove decades of corporate expansion. Is the eye proof that they can be shifted, bent, forced into new configurations that allow for new ways of living? Or is it... Si or is its inevitable collapse proof that these engines of expansion can never be anything other than a corrupt foundation? It seems to depend on who you ask. Done. Peak's shouts break your line of thought. The heat and damp should help the spores germinate quickly. If we are lucky, there is enough time for some growth before we, re we reconnect the greenway. They glance at you. That's it. All the facilities seated. They sigh. We either just ensured the ice survival or stuffed a whole lot of soil into one of its most important computers. They laugh weakly. <laughs> We're duped. Hell we go. They start to head back towards the doors in the elevator beyond. We're gonna take one last look. You wait for a moment, following the blinking lights. You wonder what might be tucked away in such a structure. What secrets it might hold. What histories. It's an intriguing prospect. But while you watch the lights, you realize something. If the eye is to become anything more than an offshoot, a temporary structure, it must form its own history. Its own stories. Stronger than anything that came before. Unlocking these Solheim secrets won't do that. But the persistence, the stubborn drive to survive that is in the veins of every person in this place? That will. And that is what you are trying to save. You turn your back on the core and follow Peek back into the elevator. As you ride the car back up, Peek raises their voice over the screeching. I'm going to the Founder's Gap to finalize the connection. The moment all I'm ready, I'll let you know and we'll let the gardener out. The sooner, the better. Peek furrows their brow. If we wait until the final cycle, it'll be too late. If you want to help speed things up, go work with the flotilla. We can't make the connection until we know they are ready to go. Peek swallows. Unleashing Gardener could affect them too if we aren't careful. And what happens then? Peek shrugs. I don't know, honestly. Or, uh, I got that backwards. Hold up. I don't honestly know. Maybe Gardener takes over the station. Maybe they don't even react. They sigh. I can't think about it any longer. You ride the rest of the way in silence. When you reach the top, you go your separate ways, but before you do, Peek embraces you, burying their face in your shoulder. You stand there together for a moment, spinning with the eye, moving relentlessly towards an unknown future, and then they let go and slip away, the pressure of their hug fading like a bruise as you begin to leave. Whoa! Arrive complete! Wow, I get to upgrade something. What do I want, what do I want to upgrade? <laughs> this one, obviously. Why would I care about plus two double data roars? Actually, the only thing is the dice. No active drives. Well, I think we might be right before the final choice. Careful, Pog! Sure sounds like it. There's always new agents to get. We should get some food. I 
Castle Park. Nearly there now. Yeah, this last chapter is longer than I expected it to be. I gotta say. Hmm. Where's the next part? This is just where I sleep. I say that they don't actually know you haven't played the third DLC have you you said you played like what the first one or two but the third one wasn't out at the time this is all new territory for you so where did he say to meet again where did they say to meet I don't see him maybe it's up here or maybe I'm supposed to just go to sleep. There's nothing more I can do today. Experience it together because I didn't realize it. When it had the game pass. Oh, I see. I don't see where... Uh... Go. He said to take, make sure the ships are ready to go, but they're already ready to go. I did them first. I did them first. I think I have to go to sleep. They always want more data. I got a bunch of data. So much data that the, uh, you know. I get a bunch of money for. There you go. I don't need that. I think the only thing to do is go to sleep. I don't see anything here. Can you say something about connecting the greenway though? Maybe it's on the other side. Hmm. I have a feeling to go to sleep, wake up next day, and then the event starts thing or something. Hmm. Yeah, there's nothing here. Can't do anything. Don't see anything anywhere. I hate going to sleep while having dice and still standing there, man. Unacceptable. I guess we'll farm mushrooms or something? Let's do it. But it's where the greenway is. It's gonna connect the greenway, right? So it makes sense to be down here. Hmm. Well, oh, 
so confused. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's happening? How's it going? How you doing? Maybe I have to wait until uh, the timer runs out. I don't see anything different anywhere. As you said, if you wait till last day, it'll be too late, though. Hmm. No active drives. How dare that? Searching, checking all the things. Checking all the things. Good, I got them all done in time. Exciting. Hmm. I do not see what to do. I really just supposed to wait until like the timer goes down to like the last day? It didn't sound like it. He was like, we gotta be prepared. We gotta be prepared. Wait till last day, it'll be too late. And now I'm hesitant to just go to sleep because it's like, what? I don't want to use all my. I want to use my dice. What we do? 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 Hmm. Those are just the uh. Yeah, those are just the. Ships with supplies. You can buy scrap, huh? That's cool. I can't believe I can only buy three at a time. Oh, I got a ship mine fragment instead. Why would I want? Why would I want that? I'll need those ship mine for ragglement. I took the scrap so I can sell for a pair. Don't give me ship mine for ragglement. You silly people. I do not see where to go. Oh, I'm really wondering if that means I'm supposed to wait for the time. I feel like I'm supposed to wait because I don't see anything. It auto saves though, so I don't want to like do the wrong thing and then it auto saves and then be like, oh. Rip.
Hmm. I guess I'm farming mushrooms. Give me my mushrooms! I don't even plant more spores. Because I got way too many. Boom, more mushrooms. Given the garden noir more work to do. I mean, I don't see what to do, so I guess I just have to go to sleep. I've gone over this station like twice? Unless I'm super blind? I don't see anything else to do. I've checked every node. I think I just have to wait until uh, like a certain day or something. Well, yeah, that's all I can do. Wait, we gotta feed our cat at least one more time. He probably makes you wait until like the second to last day. What do I want to spend my dice on? Wrap? You should do scrapo. Wow, I like how both of them rolled and got the exact same dice. One rolled to one, two rolled to two. What are the chances of that? What is the statistical probability of that? All that happens when I use low dice like that in the waste is I just get my condition hit. It seems like unless you use really good die, it's dice, you're, you're like extremely likely to lose condition there. This is so mean. Oh, we can we can work some monies. We need more monies, right? No, we don't. If there's nothing to pick uh, now, then I'm gonna be extremely confused. Oh, there we go. This makes sense. We just had, we had two, we did it with two extra days to spare. Cool. Speak slate chirps in your pocket. You take it out. A message. The connection is ready. Meet me at the Founder's Gap. Greenway side. Peak. You clench your jaw. It's time. It's time. No, I'm leaving them. I'm, I'm out of here. I'm hopping on this boat, going this way. Wait, where did the other place go? Oh, they're are they up here now? It's time. That's what they said. I'm all really confused about what to do there. It wasn't very obvious. Oh, they make sure you can't miss it when it pops up because you can't go to sleep if you got these diamonds. Let's go talk to the ant icon guy. Let's do it. You find Peak waiting near where you first met, at the entrance to the docking tunnel for the Founder's Ferry. They are leaning beside the wall in the flickering light, and you realize now how different they look from when you first met. There's a darkness around their eyes, a sense of exhaustion to their pose, but also a solidity, a sense of purpose and self-knowledge. They look concrete, for want of a better word. Solid. 
Sleeper. They spot you and a small smile crosses their face. Glad you came. I wouldn't be anywhere else. The smile grows. Crunch time. They shake their head in disbelief. Let's go. A brick in the connection is up ahead. They walk away from the docking tunnel into a ragged, half-crushed corridor that descends into darkness. They poke their slate in a torque. Torch flicks on, lighting the way ahead. They've got a flashlight in their, their phone. How novel, novel technology. As you descend through the layers of the broken edge of the eye, Peak talks, filling the silence. They had to hunt all over this part of the eye to find the point where the connection was broken. They run a hand along the buckled metal of the wall, stooping under the angled ceiling. This hole, the gap got knocked in the eye when Solheim collapsed. It's impossible to tell who did it, but my guess is they tried to scuttle the eye. If Solheim wouldn't keep, couldn't keep hold of their, their fancy new station, well, no one could. Peek ducks through a fractured passageway with hanging wires like vines. Though this place has always been on borrowed time. Poor guys, they've always been on borrowed time. I've managed to weave together the old connections and run a new patch down to where the main line still runs through the remaining ribs of the rim. They smile, just like keeping those old XPR platforms running. Esh would be proud if she'd bothered to help. As Pete goes quiet, the corridor opens out into a wider, twisted passage, with compartments on either side thick with wiring. Not much. It's right, it's right, it's right. Here, this is the connection point. You can see where Peek has levered off a panel and hooked up a thick cable to the existing hardware. As thick as a tree trunk. Damn, that's a thick wire, all right. It snakes off into the dark ahead, its yellow rings making it look like some huge and exotic serpent. You did all this? Peek nods. It was an interesting challenge. Plus, it helped me keep my mind off things. Peek smiles a weak smile. There's a lot I'd prefer not to think about. You both stand there, staring at the point where the new cable meets the old one. The ends separate, fitted with multi-pin male and female connectors embraced inside a metal framework with a scissoring mechanism. Bring them together, seal them, and the greenway will be connected to the rest of the eye for the first time in decades. It shifts their weight onto one hip, pushing their hair out of their eyes. I feel like this should be more momentous. Like there should be some ritual or ceremony. They pause. Or someone should stop us from doing this crazy thing. I mean, it isn't crazy. Peek nods. I mean, I'm not being funny, sleeper. But this whole thing is crazy to me. Peek shakes their head. Leaving Hawthorne with Esh. Joining the flotilla. Coming here. Meeting you. The flux. The shadow. Everything. They laugh a hollow laugh. Though I suppose this is at least consistent with all that. They take a deep breath. Okay. They look at you with mild panic. They hold both sides of the supporting framework, ready to scissor it closed. Here we go. Beak wrenches the framework closed, and the connectors stunk together with a sound that echoes down the ruined corridor into the dark on both sides. Both you and Peek wait with bated breath, unsure what it is you are waiting for. Do you expect the eye to suddenly stop spinning, or lurch on its axis, for the power to go out, or a shockwave to run through the corridors of the rim? You meet Peek's eyes, and suddenly they burst out laughing. What are we waiting for? They put a hand to their forehead. I feel like we just planted a tree and are expecting it to burst out of the ground. They shake their head. But you feel it. You feel it flowing like a stream that has been released from a cave and rushes out into the sunlight, crystalline and clear. You swear you could hear it running in the wires, like water, like rain, like steam. It doesn't roar or rattle, but it rustles and writhes there, like liquid roots. Peek sees the look in your eyes and stops laughing. You can see it, can't you? 
You can't see it, not with your eyes at least, but it is everywhere, and now it is out. It can't be put back in. That much is clear. You imagine the rim of the eye like a sponge, like soil, soaking up the gardener in their chorus, the gaps filling with a burbling, constant growing life. He stares at you, waiting for something. Hmm. Gardener is free! He nods slowly and closes their eyes. They go to speak, but the words fail them. Suddenly, Peak's slate chirps. They jump and scramble for it, almost dropping it in the process. But when they stare at it, a look of confusion crosses their face. What happened? Peak's mouth falls open. It's Esh. They swallow. She's leaving. They look at you with panic. Before you can move, or before you can speak, they have turned away and are moving back up the passageway, back towards the entrance. Eek! They don't turn, don't respond, and you watch their silhouette, lit by their slate's torch, disappear rapidly around a corner. You take out the slate Pete gave you and turn on the torch. Good thing that he ga they gave me this or I would have, like, been lost in the dark, right? They think I'm, just because I'm a robot, I got night vision goggles? Like, come on. The wires all around look like pale roots in the harsh light, and you turn away from them. They are gardeners now. You work your way back through the corridors, retracing your steps. You imagine Peek, panicked, running towards the cordon, realizing that their greatest fear has come to pass. You wonder if they will be able to persuade Esh to stay. If Esh is going, you think, then the flotilla must be leaving too. The thought makes you shiver in the darkness, and you push it away. You are not ready. You focus on avoiding the hanging wires, the low ceilings, and make your way back out into the lit corridors of the Founder's Ferry Dock. Castor is waiting for you. Fuck off, piece of shit. He holds up his hands. Now, now, sleeper. No need to fear. He raises his eyebrows. I understand now it was my mistake to try to force you. A miscalculation. Why are you here? Good, good. Questions are good. He pushes his glasses up his nose. I am more than happy to answer any you may have. I won't hold you here, sleeper. Castor stands to the side. But I wish to speak. I guess we'll listen to you. You stop, giving Castor his opportunity. Castor nods. At first I thought that, if you'll excuse the turn of phrase... Taking possession of your particular talents was the opportunity. He smiles a broad smile. But you are more than that, and I understand that now. Your arrival on this station, your ability to touch the networks, this makes you the very definition of a wild card. He touches the rim of his glasses. Senate stats analysis, my analysis, we could never have accounted for you. The system, the Helion system, is about to experience a significant change. About to open up to Senate Stats bailiffs, Conway's claimants, and every industry and element an active can channel brings. Yet this very cycle, you let another wild card free. Gardner. I have to admit, this development makes me afraid, sleeper. It makes me afraid what an intelligence like this will sacrifice to protect itself, or what atrocities it might commit through madness. And yet, Castor's eyes glint. What a compelling object such an intelligence is. He's like, mm, I don't know if I like this, but I'm curious about it. And I stare at you, a look of confusion also crosses your face. You're like, what? What? Eh? What? Eh? That's you all the time. Careful heart! Oh! Let me protect you. Mark you out. Keep Senate stat from eliminating by force or legal expediency you as they will with every other squatter on this ring. Astor clasps their hands together. And in exchange, when Senate stat comes for this place, you facilitate the handover. You calm the protocols. 
You give us the gardener. Mm. Right. And if I go for, and I go free, I don't think so. Caster takes off their glasses and polishes them. You go free. He meets your eye. Do you accept? Can you even promise such a thing? Your head swims at the thought of controlling Gardner, but also at the idea of the eye being claimed by Senate stat. Every person deported and rehoused, or worse. Is this is this the big choice here? Is this the big choice that the turbans there there, or is this a, a smaller choice? No wonder. on a shrine with three items in it and two tridents. Damn, so when they fi fixed the cheese, they also nerfed the shit out of it. That was just a regular shrine, right? Not a dived one with, like, the uh, unique uh, faction items? Maybe this is why people cheese it? Yeah, maybe. Our usual? Well, um... Awesome. Aren't you glad we, uh, did three days last week and got that extra six levels? That we would um, have got if we just did Saturday and Sunday? Anyway, I'm gonna tell this guy to fuck off. Refuse! Caster takes off their glasses. Takes of their glasses? F fucking 12. And polishes them. Disappointing. You begin to leave. As you approach, he speaks quietly, an urgent whisper. I do not wish to see you lost. You are of great value. If you ever want to see that realized. You push past, ignoring him, and his voice fades. The last you see of him is his slow nod, perhaps a mark of resignation, or just another deferential gesture aimed at manipulating your response. It doesn't matter either way, you are done with him. You head towards the cordon, peak in the flotilla in the forefront of your mind. That's because that's pathetic. That's really pathetic. You gonna let me select a game? Well, oh, okay. A cordon! You arrive into chaos at the cordon. The final shuttles are leaving the ramshackle docks that have formed along the edge of the gap during the flotilla's stay. As they do, groups of evacuees push on board, hoping to be among the final people to escape from the Eye. The fear created by the Flux event became a series of rumors, and those rumors have driven many out of their homes. Others have staunchly doubled down on their position on the Eye, refusing to accept any gossip of a second collapse. You are unsure what, to, what, to, what you think? Is the collapse a certainty? Will Peak's actions this cycle have changed anything at all? You are tired of these questions, and instead set out to look for your friends. You quickly spot Peak and Esh at the far side of the chaotic bay. You quickly make your way through the crowds, slipping between the gaps in the rushing evacuees, stepping over bags and luggage. Progress is slow, but as you approach, you can hear their voices over the crowd. 
We try to push closer, but there are many evacuees gathered around them and their shuttle. You have made your decision, Peek, and it puts you against me. Uh-oh. Esh is standing with one foot on the boarding ramp while Peek argues with her. The evacuees are eyeing them, eager to intervene, but intimidated by Esh's evident strength and attitude. Esh, it doesn't have to be like this. Peek looks desperate, tear tracks already on their cheeks. We can find a way. Esh shakes her head. I have, all, I have always protected you, Peek. I have taken you under my wing. But I understand that you are not mine to control. And you have chosen, chosen to be here and not with me, despite everything. That sounds like some premium grade A guilt tripping right there. I have chosen to stop running, Pete cries out in frustration. You can choose to stop running too. We can stay here and try to live. Don't you remember what it feels like to live, Esh? Esh turns away. I remember what it was like to live on Hawthorne. What it was like to be worried for your safety every cycle. To live under the control of my mother. Of the administration. To work to maintain something that no one wanted. No one needed. So that our corporation could maintain a foothold in this system. You talk as if this place in the very same system is any different. What is there here but the same grind? For other masters, who, for employers, administrators, for those who gain from our struggles. There may not be a corporation controlling the eye, but there is control. There is power in action here. I mean, that will be the case anywhere. Unless you live in like like a hermit in some mountain somewhere. You go to any town, any city, any planet, any whatever, there's gonna be somebody in charge. She wants to build her own city and be the one in charge. There we go. You wanna be a hermit? Gosh, that sounds like there's lots of bugs involved in that. I'll pass. I'll pass. I don't need no bugs. Lots of mosquitoes. I can't believe this. Well, it sounds like you and Esh would get along. That's the problem. She wants to be a leader. I'll tell, I'll tell you how bad leaders are. I think you and Esh would get along. You both clearly want to be hermits. You don't want anyone telling you what to do. You know, I like your administrators telling you what to, what to do with your existence. Work for me? No, I don't do that. I'm out of here. So what then, Peek shouts. You run from anyone or everyone who could ever be close to you in search of freedom? In search of some perfect place where no one has power over you? Peek is crying openly now. I want to be part of something, Esh. Even if it is broken and suffering. Even if it cannot be free. Esh pauses and takes a deep breath. She nods, her eyes closed. This isn't Hawthorne anymore. We aren't tied by our childhood or by our shared need to escape. We are both just people in this system. She opens her eyes. I release you, Peek. You are free of me. Esh, please. They hold out a hand. There is a life here if you want it. Esh turns and smiles at Peek, her eyes wet now, too. Then you live it for me, Peek. I can't. And she climbs up the boarding ramp, the evacuees taking their chance to climb on board, too. You watch as the shuttle closes its ramp, lifts off, and leaves the bay. Rip. The crowds are dispersing now as they get onto the shuttles or say their goodbyes and move back into the main part of the cordon. You push past the last of them to reach Peek. Peek doesn't turn as you come closer. Leaper. Esh is gone. Damn, I, should I tell them what to do? I can't tell them what to do. They gotta make their own choices. She chose to leave, yes, it's true. Peek nods. I have known her my whole life. They wipe their face. But since we arrived, we've been going different directions. They turn to face you. I'll miss the briar, but she'll serve Esh well. I know that. Soul, Slaper! 
The shout takes you by surprise, and as you turn, you see Sol coming across the bay towards you, the last two shuttles loading up behind him. He reaches you, his suit hissing as he does. Can't believe you'd make an old man run across this bay to get you. He pauses to take a breath. The singers have gone. They left at the start of the cycle. They broke away from the flotilla. Oh damn, they decided not to stay to be guards, huh? You smile as you think of Tala, safely cradled within one of those singer ships, on her way to the Starward Belt, and hopefully a reunion with her brother. Godspeed, Tala. What are you smiling at? Sol interrupts your thoughts. They forced our hand. We have to leave now. Sol shakes his head. If we follow close enough behind, maybe they'll end up being our scouts anyway. I reckon any hostile spacers out there will give them a wide berth. Pilgrim Seed will need a little time to make our way out of the cordon, but I'm heading back now to get her started. Thankfully, the step ships are sticking with us, so we'll be plenty well supplied for the journey to the belt. He pauses. Anyway, I didn't plod all the way over here to tell you that. Sol looks between you and Peek with a raised eyebrow. It's now or never, sleeper. I'm good to my word, and I kept a berth for you, but this is your last chance to take it. He scratches at his beard. Make a call. You glance out at the flotilla beyond the bay, beautiful in the light of Helion's sun. You think of the long journey to the Starward Belt, of the people inside the Pilgrim Seed, of the possible futures that await. Then you think of the people here on the eye, of Peak beside you, of the smallest shifts yet to come, and the routines that ground you, of promises and possibilities. <gasps> Leave or stay! It's a big choice! The big choice is here! You do that, you miss out on the most important and best thing. What's the most important and best thing, Dolby? Gamers. Hey, Slizzy! What's up? What's happening? How's it going? Yes, we're gamers. We're gaming right now. Hmm. Well, in every other one of these ending choices... The one to leave puts you back at the title screen before the choice. And the stay usually puts you keeps you on the eye and you keep doing stuff. So I think we'll choose leave first. And hopefully it'll let me reload to see the other ending. Or I'll be mad. Because I don't have to do a bunch of stuff again and see the other ending. I'll be like, how dare you do this to me? Something you've come to enjoy doing a lot lately? Hmm, that sounds pretty important, all right. Well, let's go with leave. You open your mouth to speak and realize this is the final time you'll make this choice. You have to be sure. I um, mean, yeah, it's not the final time. I'll just reload. I'm leaving! You say the words, and they seem to carry your heart out of your mouth with them. You feel lightheaded, spinning, as if you tumbled out of the bay into open space. Sol nods. Come on, then. Let's go. You freeze for a moment, feeling Peek's presence beside you, and the moment to speak disappear. Dub, 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 dub. Good luck, Peek. Peek nods. You too. They manage to squeeze out the words before going silent. And then you are walking with Sol across the bay, almost without trying. Your step light and your head spinning. Sol grips your hand to help you up onto the shuttle ramp, and as he does, you feel the thick texture of his worn hands in great detail, as if you were touching some cratered landscape. You grip them tightly as you get on board. As the ramp begins to close, you see Peek watching at a distance, their face half covered by their hair. They raise a hand in farewell, and as they do, you see something in their expression that you can't quite place. A sense of determination, perhaps, or a compressed anger. Something that will drive them forward from this point on, to a future you can believe will be better. And then the shuttle ramp closes, and the metal box you are inside rumbles and tilts. Some of the evacuees with you screech at the sudden movement, but they settle as the ship carves its way out of the bay towards the flotilla, towards whatever comes next. When you arrive there, you will find a berth, just as Sol promised tucked in among hundreds of others, like a strange neighborhood of tiny flats. The communal canteens, the water supply, the farm stacks, these shared spaces will become the center of this new reality, the places where stories are shared, 
where signals and messages from the ships of the system and the eye itself are inter interpreted and discussed. You will find yourself unable to resist listening in to any conversation about the eye, any scrap of data or detail. This is how you will hear that another flux event hit not long after the flotilla left, one that knocked out the power for the whole free spoke, they say, disconnecting the hub from the rim for many cycles, one that crippled many systems and cost many lives. No! But the flotilla, having departed with enough time, will outrun the flux, and you and all the evacuees will be thankful for this mercy. You will also hear of the strange growths that people started reporting around the station in the wake of this event. Fungal crusts that pushed through pipes and wiring. Rumors of the eye going wild and fecund will uh, we'll travel quickly around the Pilgrim Seed, telling stories of a station of increasing unpredictability, prone to seasonal rhythm of spore clouds and sudden growth spurts. As your journey along, the system becomes a dull routine of the same faces and places, you will delight to overhear that the eye persists despite everything, that crippled systems are rebooted and replaced, that the new seasons of growth and decay bring with them a plentitude of resources and surprises. You will hear that Haven Age's hardliners have fizzled out, losing their grip on the Haven Age Council. In their wake, Helene will spearhead a series of reforms that will scale back Haven Age's overreach, returning them to the caretaker role they had always intended to fulfill. And, after a long time, you will find the stories of the eye become less the signals and messages fewer, replaced instead by a new array of broadcasts, this time from Senate Stat, stating legal precedents and quoting deeds of ownership, staking a claim on the system. These messages will set the rumor mill of the Pilgrim Seed spinning, and you will rarely have a moment when you don't hear mention of that company and its claims. Occasionally, on the long trip, you'll make a pilgrimage to the dust houses on a supply shuttle and gather clubheads from among the mulch. You'll talk with Aki as they are processed into stabilizer and hear of how the plants are changing, adapting, becoming ever intertwined in this new and unprecedented ecosystem. And then, in the final part of your journey, as you reach the far parts of the system where few signals travel, and the starward belt girds the system like a defensive ring, there will be distant reports of another fleet entering the system, under the banner of the all-too-familiar Conway Extractions. By this time, the, this, by the time this happens, you and the evacuees will begin to discuss these events less and less, perhaps in the hope of avoiding being implicated in the coming corporate war. And finally, one cycle far from this moment, you will arrive at an asteroid belt in the star, asteroid port in the Starward Belt, one you have yet to know and you and all the evacuees will be released into it. In that moment, half a system and hundreds of cycles away from the eye, you will think back on your time there with equal sadness and fondness. And then you will step out of the pilgrim seed, never to return, and once more try to make a future for yourself that might be different to those false futures promised to you so many times. But for now, you remain on the shuttle, angling its way towards the bays of the Pilgrim Seed, carrying the hopes of all who tremble quietly within it. And in this moment, you feel the eye release you, just as Esh released Peak, and it feels so good. Does it feel good? <gasps> wow! We got another ending! No achievement sound this time, because there's no achievement DLC. No DLC at all. Something Infernax could have could have done, you know, not have DLC stuff. <laughs> oh, the note taking is what you've been enjoying doing. Oh.
mature review more so. Oh, I see. I see. GG. Wait, now let's go do the true ending decision. We got this. Purple wink as what for. We're waiting for the load and the load and the load and the load of love, 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 Where did it put put me after cast to war? Before this. Well, let's see, that's it. So caster's choice wouldn't have made a difference. But you still have this right here's the big choice. We're gonna stay now. You're opening your mouth to speak, realize the fault. Oh, that's the same dialogue. I'm staying. You say the words, and the moment you do, the weight of it all seems to descend on you. You stumble a little, and then stand straight, refusing to be crushed. You feel a tightness in your chest, and a haze blurring your thoughts. Bull nods. Good luck, he sighs. You all need it. He grips your shoulder and meets your eye. Ooh, see, we're already doing the panning to zoom out to look at the eye again. He grips your shoulder and meets your eye. In the haze, his pitted and rough hand feels so real, so detailed, that it grounds you. And then it is gone, and Sol goes with it, quickly moving to the waiting shuttle. As he does, you watch, unable to speak, your whole body pulsing. And then another hand falls on your shoulder, and it grounds you once more. You turn to see Peek's bright eyes. Let's go, sleeper. You nod, and seeing how unsteady you are on your feet, Peek puts an arm around you and steers you towards the entrance to the bay. As they do, you hear the roar feel the wind as the shuttle lifts off and angles toward the flotilla. You don't turn. Instead, you keep your head down and focus on each step. As you do, you feel Peek beside you, holding a little of your weight and you holding a little of theirs. This is how it will be for many cycles after you both leave the bay and head back into the eye. You will both hold things for each other. Remind each other of the choices you made. Remind each other why it is important to keep going despite the moments when it seems impossible. You will keep help. Uh, you will keep each other going. Okay. Keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. Keep on keep 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 on keeping on. That's what that's what that 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 part made me think of was those keep on keeping on signs from Death Stranding. Keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. Keep 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 that support will be vital when the second flux event hits the eye, when it knocks the entire free spoke off the, off the power grid, making the whole station lurch with a sickening motion, when it cripples systems and corrupts processes, leading sections of the station to go dark or start venting oxygen, when holding on is all you can do while the world seems to come apart around you. And yet, somehow, the eye will persist. Systems will resist total collapse in ways that will seem inexplicable to many. But to you and Peek, they will signal the awakening of a new force within the station. The new force will bring with it new challenges and new possibilities in equal measure. Strange growths will be reported all around the station in the wake of the flux event, fungal crusts pushing through pipes and wiring. The eye will go wild and fecund. Oh, maybe we should look up this, the, the, what's the this word is this time? 
I was thinking like feral or something. Fruitful or fertile? Okay, well, I had the very wrong definition. Hmm, it's pronounced fecund, huh? Basically, it means fruitful, capable of producing offspring or fruit, huh? Wow! Okay. It's a very fertile eye, right? <laughs> the eye will go wild and fecund, becoming a station of increasing unpredictability, prone to a seasonal rhythm of spore clouds and sudden growth spurts. There will be a strange and unsettling beauty toward the, to this paradigm shift, as the greening of the station turns it from a corporate ruin to some altogether new assemblage of biological and mechanical structures. Rico will take on this challenge with energy that seems impossible for her age, and until her final day, she will delight in the new mysteries the eye and its gardener produce. And as this new era consolidates around the station, you will find yourself back in the rhythm of odd jobs and loose contracts, working to keep the eye running and your own needs met. But now, many residents will call for you specifically, and before long you'll be known as a fixer, a helper, a friend to many. And on occasion, after a long shift at the Bontion, you will hear the sound of the stray mewling, and you will crumple up, crumble up some food and sit and watch the cat eat as if it is only the only thing in the world that matters. The only thing in your world that matters. Well, that's cause it is! It's the adorable kitty cat! See, this ending's better. The cat gets mentioned. We gotta we got mention the cat. Meow! Meow! However, into all this newness, the bad old ways will still intrude. Senatstat, frustrated by the eye's resilience, will begin to send more physical threats, and supply ships and traders will suddenly stop arriving, stopped by a blockade of corporate militia. Life on the eye will be punctuated by a wide channel broadcast from Senatstat, stating legal precedents and quoting deeds of ownership, staking a claim on the system. Meanwhile, Haven Age's hardliners will fizzle out, losing their grip on the Haven Age Council. In their way, Killeen will spearhead a series of reforms that will scale back Haven Age's overreach, returning them to the caretaker role they had always intended to fulfill. As the cycles roll on and the threats gather, new broadcasts will join them, sent by Conway Extractions, making counterclaims on assets within the Helion system. This is my property! No, this is my property! This is my property! <laughs> And many on the aisle will grow quiet, losing their appetite for debating these political ma machinations or machinations as they tilt inexorably, inexorably, what inexorably? Or it's a corporate war. No, no corporate war. You leave my corporate war out of this. I don't want anything to do with this. I'm just living here. You leave me alone. Where's my pitchfork? And ever on the eye will spin growing now in strange ways, haunted by strange new growths, and hosting cultures of increasing resilience. As the Helion system descends into crisis, you will find comfort in the fungal patterns, the familiar conversations, the spices and the smells that will accumulate around you as your body continues its unavoidable decay. They settle around you, like a veil, and in time it will be impossible to see the eye without seeing its many variants and versions pasts and potential futures, and this masking of the world will mark your approaching end. <gasps> and one cycle, far from now, that accumulation of memories, of tastes, of people and places and moments will be the last thing you let go of. But for now, there is only you and Peak, arms around each other, walking slowly out of the bay, two figures born of crippled systems, linked together, continuing despite your origins. And in this frozen moment, you focus on only the next step, because that is the only way you have learnt to persist. And to persist is to believe that a future, any future at all, is possible. Aww. GG. Here's our DLC endings.
Wonder what's for after. I best that other game pass later. Pickle, 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 pickled knickers, huh? Pickled underwear? What? I was expecting something more heroic. This is just the same things happening. The heroic deeds were done before the big choice. It's just whether or not you experience the choices on the eye or hear about it from the flotilla. I guess it's time to look up the other achievements we must. Which one should we do last? Looks like we got two ending achievements we missed. And then some other missable ones. The other missable one is apparently pretty much at the start of the game. Oh, this one puts you about the main menu too. That's actually different. The other ones always put you back on the ship. Uh, I didn't want to bother to let the coat in some greenery for add some greens for gardener stuff everywhere. <laughs> so I guess it doesn't matter which ending I picked first for the DLC, but it did matter for the other ones. Uh, it's logical to pick leave first. No, oh, I think I have to pick a new playthrough anyway, don't I? I don't even know why I picked continue. Autopilot. So for the one of the endings, I have to complete the side rail thing, but do, don't help Lem. Don't watch Mina. Yeah, it just puts you before the choice again, right? Exciting. Why are you crying, Dolby? One of the endings is the side rail thing, but don't watch Mina. Don't help them. And the other one's for helping the the Lem Mina side reel cast our missions until you get the ID, but you don't tell Lem about the IDs you got. Hmm. Yeah, I can't do both of the ending ones in one playthrough. I'll have to do a playthrough for a solo ticket, and I'll have to do another playthrough for a three-body problem. These can be knocked out in an hour or so if these are your last two endings, huh? You're just imagining the world as a hermit. Thou. Heard it all. The. I don't know about that. No air conditioning, no heating. You gotta make your own. Believe that. Hmm. I guess we'll do solo ticket first. The other one, apparently, the one that's not an ending, um, is way back at the beginning at the shipyard. I guess the guy at the shipyard always tells me to fuck off. Oh, it's for- the other one's for not breaking down the winter light ship. Hmm. 
matching world's Herbert love and the joy they bring. I would being a hermit bring joy. We'll raise it. The thing to absolutely not do is babysit me, never on. Or solo to go. Hmm, hmm. I'm not reading this. Too long, didn't read. The long version's like 12 paragraphs. Now, the only difference I can see is for solo ticket, I just don't babysit Mina. And for the other one, I do have to babysit her, but I have to not tell uh, Lem about the IDs. I remember I definitely did this. So what's the difference between these? It's just which ones you start out with at minus one, isn't it? <clears throat> it just changes which ones uh, what stat. So uh, in the end, it doesn't really matter because you've got pretty much everything upgraded by the end. Really only changes the beginning, I guess. And I gotta say, I do not know which ones are which, but I'm sure there's a best one to start the game with, because the actions will be whatever, but... We're a machinist now, okay? Let's go, let's go. I, I got I got a bunch of not reading to do. We can totally finish this game today. Oh wait, I should put this part off till next week and just do another hour, right? Do it another hour next week. Ralph tease. I think what makes the three body ending the final achievement. What well, best to ha do than end with an ending so we have the cool, cla nice, calm, relaxing ending music. Would that be exciting? Is there a skip button, I wonder? I don't think there's a skip button. My skip our button. This was so long ago, man. We're all the way back in the beginning. We've come so far.
I don't think this is the winter light one. This is just the first one, I think. I uh, don't care about your tutorials. How dare you go? Wait, what? I didn't pick this one. Was I on the other one? I thought I was on the other one. We got random scrap, huh? Hey, Bunny Chan, what's up? What's happening? How's it going? I don't know. have to get another cat emote from cat with croc you choose the emote i got well i don't know what the options are but whichever one's the cutest one Okay. Can I barter for food here? Hmm, not sure. Well, thanks for the biddies, Bunny. Jeez, I think I am rich. Am I playing? I'm playing Citizen Sleeper. Which is a cool little point and click type game with lots of dialogue like this. We just finished the DLC. So now I'm going to wrap up this game by getting the last few achievements I'm missing. And uh, I've already read all this. out there's tracking me hold the the cloud we're working on trying to finish this guy's stuff plan to finish this game to die What I'm supposed to do for that one other achievement is not do it, not to cut it up. I had to investigate it instead. What's that cat emote? Because that cat Statue of Liberty. That's pretty cute. That's the saddest looking Statue of Liberty ever. Ruffle to Ruffish! Three item shrine, six item shrine, now five item shrine. Have they nerfed it to shit? Not, well, they, when they adjusted it, they also broke it. You gotta go bye. Bye, bunny. Thanks for stopping by. You take care of yourself. I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go, uh, press some more buttons. Get the cool achievement. You discover a hidden compartment with spare components and backup data storage. This has to contain something of use.
I think I have to explore Bright Market before I can get food, right? Eh, hey, I'll just die. There's no big deal. Hey, Fang, I didn't know you showed up this early. I'll just die. That's a minus one. Ooh. Be the be the, the goodies. I don't think my choices here matter at all, so I don't care what I pick. And I do not remember what I picked last time anyway. If I can survive three days. I live three days. Oh wait. We've got emphasis here. Give me the food, please. Gave me the good stuff. how the default first option is to just agree with everything. I gotta be a little bitch game. I just wanted to do the thing. Hopefully adding to the other circle doesn't avoid that achievement. But it's early game, so if I mess it up, I'm not going to care about much. I'll just start it again. Picking through the wrecked cutter is slow work, but you start to piece together the impact patterns and blast marks. Squeezed into the office at the entrance to the yard, you lay out everything you have on the winter light across the metal desk. Your makeshift forensic notes glow on Dragos' old writing slate, overlapping lines and scrawled annotations. A set of drone scans fill this small terminal with a spectrum of colors, a heat map of damage and decay. A crumpled printout from the office's ship registry lies beside them. Synthetic paper so thin it is almost transparent. Let's look at the printout. A plain list shows the registration history of the winter light. The gaps between the entries tantalizingly opaque. Its first registration was a couple of thousand cycles ago on this very station, logged at the central hub. From here, the registry tells the story of a busy ship, one that rarely stayed on a station for more than few, a few cycles and often took on voyages that kept it away from the eye for up to a hundred cycles. The winter light got little rest. Look at the slate. Your attempts at a reconstruction of the winter light before its fatal accident consists of a series of overlapping sketches and diagrams, showing possible layouts and configurations of the gutted cutter. This was no off-the-shelf model. It was heavily modified, parts replaced with inventive configurations, the new retrofitted into the old. Handmade joints and reconditioned filters. This was someone's pride and joy, a lifetime project kept running with care and intuition. It also contained a set of hidden compartments. You missed them at first, where the hull had been thickened. The corners rounded to disguise the change, but they are there. 
Reactor failure. That is the verdict that anyone would have who, who would have returned after a cursory glance at these stacked heat maps of the remains of the winter liked. On the terminal screen, the ship is shown in section, blotches of color marking the approximate damage the ship sustained. Dominating the view is a single blood-red rose, radiating from the ship's fraction drive. A simple story. A catastrophic failure of the drive core, leading to a fatal hull breach. A well-documented failure, likely brought on by wear or misuse. But you aren't looking at the rose of the reactor. You are looking at a smaller, paler mark, one that might e be easy to miss at first glance. It is thumbprint-sized and delicately placed over the control servos for the ship's main external airlock. It suggests a controlled, shaped explosion, one designed to punch through the hull and allow access to the airlock from the outside. You are looking at it because it is troubling you. An old ship, many cycles under its belt, carefully maintained. A reactor failure preceded by a carefully concealed external entry. A suite of hidden compartments, tucked away. This was the winter light, and this was its story. But that's not the full story, because there's something else. It is little more than a list, a tiny chunk of data you were able to pull from the ship's systems. The main systems were fried, of course, but the winter light had a separate system, one tucked away in one of its hidden compartments. Armored. Airwalled. This list, the only recoverable piece from the whole system, is a partial inventory. It details the contents of the hidden compartments. Some of it you recognize, some of it you don't. Shipmind ROMs, Shimmer, Cryo Chain Codes, and then the final entry. Passenger. Sleeper. You stare at the list on the terminal and try not to think about what it was like arriving here in the cold for so long, half frozen in the freight container. Had this sleeper been smarter? Luckier? How had they convinced the Winter Light, a smuggler ship if you ever saw one, to extract them from SNARP? Luckier, you laugh. There had been no remains found in any of the Winter Light's compartments. You had checked. They weren't so lucky, you guess. Not in the end. You hold up a vial of stabilizer to the light. This was all you find in their compartment. A parting gift for Messonarp. Well, it won't go to waste now. You put it back in your pocket. The thought still bothers you, though. Two ships carrying sleepers coming into the same yard? Two. One after the other. That feels wrong. You flick back and forth between data sets on the terminal, thinking. And you see that thumbprint again. The mark of someone trying to get in. Someone who entered the winter light with precision and speed. And when they were done, left the reactor to clean up the rest. The thought of that person makes you shiver. Suddenly, the office door creaks open. Drago stands in the doorway, staring at the equipment and notes you have assembled. What is all this? He snatches the slate from the desk, faster than you realized he could move. You're running an investigation here? What am I paying you for? The drone on his shoulder starts whining shrilly, his anger passing it through, th passing to it through his implants. Oh, are you hiding something? Hiding something? I'm hiding you, goddammit! And what are you doing for me? Digging around in my business. He starts shaking his head. I know you have a lot of questions, but this isn't the way. He turns away, muttering to himself, This is the last thing I need. <clears throat> Who is bringing you these ships? Dragos freezes, suddenly angry. Why are you asking? You looking to get us both killed? We cut these things up. That's our part. Their part is something I don't want to know. Drago seems to steady himself and then turns back to you. The heat map of the reactor failure reflected in his headset's glassy, glassy eyes. I've given you a place to stay. I've given you work. I've... He stumbles over the words, unsure what to say. There's plenty others who would have sold you on, turned you in, but not me. No. How dare you question me after I have helped you so graciously. Six shrines since the update, not one of them good. Seems that they've uh, nerfed it a little too hard. They really don't want anybody to do them ever again, I guess.
I know. He softens. Look, you've helped me too. He quiets the drone. I've done well by you, and you've returned the favor. He straightens up and clears his throat. But this obsession you have with this ship isn't going to work for me. I can't have you making my clients nervous. I can't have you digging up whatever it is you are after. He sighs. You can't work here anymore. <clears throat> oh, mom, mom, mom. What about the winter light? He reaches over and switches the monitor off. Forget about the damn ship. You have enough to keep you up. Trigus reaches across you and flicks off the terminal. As the light of the monitor dies, a kind of eerie calm falls on both of you. Whatever this was, it is done. You made it out, sleeper. That means you have to move on. Someone killed that ship and its crew. And you want to meet them? He shakes his head. We are done here. In the dark, Dragos glint headset. Dragos's Dragos. Wait, in the dark, Dragos headset glints. Is that supposed to be possessive? It's supposed to be his headset, right? I think they forgot the apostrophe. I don't need the S part. This is the apostrophe. In the dark, Dragos's headset glints, and you wish for a moment you could see his eyes and meet them. Maybe then he would understand. You get up from the desk, and Dragos gathers the notes, stuffing them into a pocket of his overalls. He holds the door for you, his headset as expressionless as always. You can stay in the container. I won't take that from you. Don't come back. His tone is final, definite, with an edge of disappointment. You walk out of the office and then out of the yard, not stopping to look back. You leave the yard, thumbing the vial in your pocket, knowing that this, at least, guarantees you a little more time. And as you walk, your mind once again drifts to that person who killed the winter light, and whether or not that person will come for you. Oh yeah. Fellow traveler achievement unlocked! Found a gift from someone like you, hid in the way. Wow! Oh yeah, the uh... The guy tells you to fuck off regardless. Either, either you find out too much and he's like, you get out of here, or he uh, gets scared. Of, uh... Wasn't it Maywick that killed the ship or something? He's scared of the bounty hunter, and then he, he kicks you out. So either way, you don't work for him anymore. Ruffle wow! Yeah, it's been a while since we've heard that sound in this game, hasn't it? We've got two more of those sounds to make. So, what do I need to do to get the side reel horizon part started? Ooh, probably do shipyard, right? Oh wait, I can't do anything right now. I got no dice. Let's get our first stabilizer going. Our free stabilizer from the person. Oh my gosh, where's butt? This part where we get some stabilizer from this guy. I get my first freebie one. Oh, wait, I don't get my first freebie one. I just wasted my stabilizer. Because he gives you the first one for free by injecting it, not just handing it to you. Well, I got an extra stabilizer for no reason. I used, I used that extra one for no reason. I forgot that he injects it. Okay. Ba, ba, ba. I know, I know. Wasted it. Just work a few extra days before you get to the next one, but almost dying is uh, more exciting. Ah, oh, fuck off. Yeah, you can't stop the, uh, that other idiot from trying to bounty hunt you. Oh, 
What's with these dice here? This one's a plus one. I guess we have to do this. Staying quiet. I have no idea what I said previously. Maybe. They're so adorable. You go that route first, then you're going to use it. I should have done is not use the stabilizer. Should have gotten the freebie one. Because you have to do the events when they pop up. You can't go to sleep. So I have to. I can't just go to sleep right now because I got this event right here. You watch it, so you can't do it. Complete active scenes. It says. So I had to do the Sabine thing to get the injected, but I didn't realize he was going to inject it. I thought he was just going to hand me it. Why is not going to know not to use it because you'll get a freebie? That's true. Oh, I, it's been so long since I uh, played the beginning, I forgot that he injected it, you know. And they cost like 100 to 90 or 100 credits or some shit. I get money doing this. Keep walking, ignored. Stay silent. Damn it. They forced they forced me to babysit Mina for this part. Stay silent! What? Blah 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 blah. We'll go play video games. I'm, I guess they, she doesn't have video games on this slate. you draw. Wow. She drew wiggles. Draw a cat. We gotta draw a cat. You know, watch this intently. Fuzzy! She smiles. I like your friend. She pokes your arm a couple of times. Are you really a robot? Sort of. Very cute. We managed.
dangerous, huh? At least I get paid money for working on this. I'll definitely be able to afford a stabilizer. I think it's about time for Bounty Hunter. Not much! I got one more day for that. Like a hundred or... Yeah, it's like fucking hundred. The fuck, man? You rip off. Ooh, rip off. Look at all these ones. My condition. Ugh. Well, I at least I still get money with my condition. Blech. Mash. Wait, when the hell did I get two upgrade points? I can't make engineer plus two. I'm a hard worker. I've got almost 300 credits now. made of money. What happens when I don't pay his bounty? He probably beats me up. We all know he doesn't have the guts to actually kill me. Go through with his threats. He'd have the guts to do any of that shit. I wonder if I have to do Castor. I'll have to think about it. I have to go past the low end to go up to Spoke to be able to get out of here, so. That's some shitty dice to that. Aw, oh, fuck off. They're not giving it to me today. Three negatives in a row. What's that thing I got? 
Oh, a passkey for their apartment. Our apartment. Wow, exciting stuff. Lemon Mina's unit is gonna be ignored. I have to fulfill that too. Darn, I guess it's time to, uh, get going. Got to eat. Ugh. Rip one condition already. Well, that's some good dice. You feeling okay, game? But you're supposed to keep giving me shit. Eh? Oh. I forgot all about that. need to be. Oh my gosh. Where the heck was Castor's table? Oh, somewhere around here. Ugh, probably had to do that. Oh, I've got plus one over there. Why wouldn't I do that one? Castor. I wonder if I had to give them that data. I don't know. That would require actually doing some stuff, though. Gosh. I, how dare you tutorial me? Those are all ones. Those keynotes aren't for the right data anyway.
Wait, these things were just for, uh, if I remember right, these were just for, uh, one of them gave me a stabilizer, I think, and the other one gave me, uh, a ship mine core, I think it was. I don't think it matters if I do this. In fact, I may not have had to unlock Caster's table at all. He might just show up at that point, some point in the story, anyway. I guess he's uh, decided to beat me up. Wakey, wakey! Ethan is outside the moment you leave, leaning on the corridor wall. Ethan. Hmm, that's right. He pushes off from the wall, a little shaky on his feet. He made me come all the way up here. His hand comes to rest on the butt of his handgun, dangling from a chest holster. Holster. That's how we had a deal here. You pay my tab and I don't shoot you. Wasn't that it? Or am I misremembering? Someone could be sitting on my stool right now. Think about that, he smiles. I like it there. We, there we have music. We have drinks. We have darkness. He shades his eyes. All we have here is fluorescent lights and a bad smell. What's your problem? My problem is you didn't clear my tab, so I'm here to clear that up. Ethan lazily draws out or draws his handgun from his holster and holds it out. Cryo, wherever you have. Now. No. Come on! Ethan suddenly shouts. You are wasting my time! Ethan leans over and pats your pockets, keeping the gun trained on you. We have to stop meeting here. This place stinks. He finds your chits and pulls out a handful. How dare he? Thank you! He stuffs the chits into a pocket without counting them. Was that so hard? Why are you doing this? You think this is on me? I think someone in your position might have a better idea of how this all works. Ethan holsters his gun and pulls into his coat pocket. He pulls out a hip flask and takes a swig. I'm a freelancer, sleeper, just like you. We both signed a contract with us and ARP, didn't we? The difference is, is that my word means something. He closes the gap, stumbling a little. What did you think? You could just run away from your contract. Your debt? You think you could just steal that natty little body of yours and take it for a joyride? Play human for a cycle or two? I'm nothing like you. That's what I'm saying! Ethan gestures around the corridor as if he has an audience. You are a coward. I'm a professional. <laughs> oh, I should thank you. Taking another swig from the flask. For giving me such an easy job. I'm used to outlaws, you know. Real bounties. If I knew catching sad little scapees like you was so easy, I would have changed clients ages ago. Ethan drains the rest of the flask. The thing is, Sleeper, I can find you anywhere. It's actually wild that you haven't figured it out. That body of yours isn't yours, and it will always betray you, no matter what. No, oh, please go. I'll catch up with you whenever I need another drink. He laughs and walks off down the corridor. Leave! You turn and set off in the opposite direction. Head down. You walk hard and fast down the walkway, anger driving your footfalls into the metal of the rim like hammers. He's... He stole 50 of my things! No, wait, 60. He stole 60 bucks from me. This fucking piece of shit. How dare he? Actual full shrine after seven of the things. Well, that's pretty, uh, 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 uh cool. It's a good sign. It clearly, it's still working as intended. Time for the lottery where nobody wins. Oh, maybe not. It's not time for the lottery where nobody wins. We gotta wait for that thing to go up first. Oh, uh, okay.
Ah. What do we want to do? Negative outcome plus energy? Huh? Excuse me? Alright. This goes safe. I guess that gets some money, but... You can actually unlock a uh, scrap pretty early, can't you? you unlock that really early. Neither of those. Hmm. Not doing that. As cute as the cat is, we're not doing that. This is uh, Sabine's things, which I probably don't need to do. Minus one. Can you believe that nonsense? Nine cryos. So isn't the best way to make money, Abba? That seems to be the only way to make money right now. open this up, don't I? Ah, fuck off. I actually don't know if I need to open that up to do side real horizon, but it doesn't hurt, right? That's to get bliss. Okay. Yeah, tell I remembered all the stuff. Wow, this gets me my house. 
But I can pay money to sleep on you. Yeah, no thanks. Let's go see how we didn't win the lottery because it was rigged from the start. didn't go very well. Who could have predicted this outcome? Hmm. I could have moved the zero there. You go over here and you get energy, no problem. Even when you get a negative outcome, you get energy. Because it's safe. Damn, game. Stop fucking me over by giving me energy. Or negative outcome. Yeah, give me some money. Thank you. days for that bitch. It's time for the find the the the, the. Oh yeah this is when they canceled the contract. How terrible. I feel so bad for you. No, I don't. Sorry, was I supposed to feel bad for you or something? Go gambling. Wow. money now. Gambling is the solution on what to do with your money, clearly. 
made more money doing that than working at the restaurant. Oh, that opens up that. Okay. I see, I see, I see. Got one more day for this thing. And we have to start figuring out how to get into it. I've done a few so far. I haven't been banned. Isn't that exciting? Dang, they got me. After getting positive for like 12 bajillion times, they finally got me. how that casino there is still in business. They let me win so much. So far you haven't been banned, does this mean you won or, blah, or lost? Yes. Just yes. I refuse to elaborate, just yes. like lost in your eyes. No comment. Do what now? I'm gonna do this, right? gone with all sixes, you know. Oh, can't repeat that. I should leave that with for the next day. Cause that's too risky to use a one on. Is 
Could have tried one of the ones for the other thing. I had three chances to not mess up the lockdown. Oh, we're out of scrap now. Ta, ah, we have to take the hit. I can't use a stabilizer right now. That'd be uh, what do you think we are made of money? Whoa, 53 cryo. Okay, we got the eyeball D's. What's that? Just wait now. I think we just wait now. Oh, hook us up. Yep, all we do is wait for this to cycle out. Go through the cycles. We're pretty much there. Now I just gotta wait. How many days is it again? One, two, three, four, six days. Can I just sleep for six days? What am I supposed to do for six? Oh. I know. Gamble. Duh. Gamble away all my money. Because you can't... Apparently this place somehow doesn't, isn't out of business. Even though I keep winning. Duh. There we go. I finally lost one. If that place was an actual casino, that'd be gone, man. That'd it shut down. Don't they know they're supposed to rig their games so that they win 98% of the time? Stop stealing all my money. Oh yeah, I should probably eat something. Or I go kill in my condition. Eh. Let's just get some Enermordies. point having less dice is beneficial because that's less actions you have to do and then you can go sleep and go the next day. Gambling is fun in a video game. Don't try this at home kids. Dot dot dot. I've, I've, I have got obtained the gambling addiction, Dolby. This is t terrible, horrible. Hmm? 
Oh, I picked the wrong thing. Sorry, Fang, we're done with your shit. Like we're about to run into trouble with Bounty Hunter guy, too. I think that's the part where he dies, isn't it? Imagine if you had a magical dice that gave you a 100% chance of winning. Casinos wouldn't exist. <laughs> Actually, many things wouldn't exist. Yeah, would detect that. Yeah, they had to figure it out somehow. Many things designed to exploit you would have to work around it. Time for him to bye bye. Go bye bye. Oh, maybe not. This is the part where we try to uh, steal the gun then. Not paying off your fucking debt, piece of shit. Fuck off. Did he take some of my money again? Eh? It's not the one I was picking. I was picking this. I don't know if he stole from me again because I don't know how much money I had. Ooh, Maywick's on his way now. Oh no. That's just the part where he warns me, right? I don't think I gotta worry about Maywick on this playthrough. <laughs> how much longer? Probably like three. Ooh, one more. day at the casino. You have an addiction too? Oh no. The big day. There's a crowd gathered where Tila's security are checking the crew in to board the ship. Those that manage to get up to the hub are crowded near the entrance, but even there, you must know their chance of getting on board is long gone. You make your way through the loose crowd, trying not to bring attention to yourself or to the film clutched in your fist. You are so close now. You join a short line of crew members, nervously waiting in a cordoned off line. As you wait, you nervously inspect your ID film, desperate for a distraction. As you lift the film up to the light, you see something strange, something that makes you flinch. The face printed in the film is one you recognize immediately, but it is not you. At least, it is not how you look now. You squint at this ghost, confused why you hadn't noticed earlier. It is a picture you remember being taken, a memory that you didn't know you had. You remember signing the forms, the walk to the sleeper tanks, the cold metal floor. You remember the SNARP employee who helped you in, her smile clean and surgical. You freeze in place, thinking of the you that still sleeps somewhere in an SNARP facility, that won't wake until you are recovered and disposed of. And now you are leaving. Will they ever wake up? Nah, 
next? The guard interrupts her thoughts, gesturing for you to come forward to the entrance. You wait for a moment. You need to wait for a moment. This is all happening too fast, changing too much. There are so many questions you have, so many threads to catch hold of. And yet here you are, boarding a ship to who knows where, on a journey that will take decades. Is this really what you want? How will you even survive? You suddenly feel dizzy, unsettled. You take a breath. This is it. You reflexively look over your shoulder one last time, and that is when you see them. Lem and Mina stood on the viewing platform, looking almost like the day you met them. They don't seem to have seen you. Instead, their eyes are locked on the yellow hull of the horizon, side real horizon, waiting for it to undock from their lives and drift into the black. Lol. Sorry, we got we gotta get out of here. You turn and step forward. The guard takes the ID film and slides it across a white machine, much like the one Castor printed them from. You reflexively rub the puncture mark on your hand, even though there is no trace of it now. It seems to be your destiny to be someone else's tool. You move up to the entrance, refusing to look back. You keep moving, up into the docking bridge, then along that thin glass-walled connector. It feels like you are gliding among the stars themselves. You stare wide-eyed at the vast hull of the side rail horizon, and try to think of this huge machine as a home. It is still a picture of the old you, the person that signed up to have their consciousness co copied and placed into the ownership of SNR. Impulsively, you decide you don't need to think about that person anymore. You crumple up the film and let it drop, then step through the threshold onto the ship. Later, you lie back in on your bunk as the thrust of the side reel's vast engines kick in. This feeling, this rumble, will be your constant companion for the next decades. It will be there when you work, when you sleep, when you dream of the planet at the end of the journey. It will stay with you when your body starts to fail, as the years stack up and it exceeds its safe operating period by a decade. It will underscore the debate between the other crew members as they discuss whether they have enough resources to try to keep you alive. It will be the final thing you hear as they solemnly shut down all but the most vital of all of your functions, telling you that they will awaken you on arrival at Sealess One. But for now, in this moment of departure, it is still a new sound, a new feeling, and because of this, it is filled with the promise of the future. And so, you settle back on your bunk and close your eyes, and in moments you are sleeping a pe perfect, dreamless sleep, the most peaceful that you can ever remember. Solo ticket achievement unlocked. Nothing got in the way of your escape, apart from you. <gasps> that, that description was very similar to the one where we leave with Lemon Mina, except it was the crew dealing with me instead of Mina. Very similar, though. Oh, well, I'm so sad. We should we should reload and see what happens if we call out instead. Even though that one doesn't have an achievement. Because I think the other one requires uh, you to uh, get the three tickets and babysit Mina. I'm still curious what happens if you call out, though. We're almost there, Dolby. One more ending and we'll be done. I just gotta start another playthrough and speedrun again to get to this part again. How does it feel to be so close to done? One thing you want to see, what might that be? Let's see what happens when you call out instead. Well, well, what? It's 
Secret. I see! Bars! What? Did something change? Let's call out! You call out. You aren't sure why. They don't seem to hear you. The guard asks you to come forward again. What are you doing? You scream Lem's name. You know exactly what you are doing. This is not your ticket. This is Lem's ticket. You try to breathlessly explain this to the guard who wants you to board. Oh, Lem's down. You shout for Lem to come, and he struggles through the crowd. Your screaming and shouting seems to have riled them up. They are starting to push at the cordon. Lem arrives with Mina, both looking terrified. Laper, what are you doing? The guard is shouting now, too. Not at you, but at the crowd. You should go. He looks pale. What? How? You stuff the ID film into his hand and pull him under the cordon. The guards look nervously at the crowd. Let him board! The guards look at Lem and Mina, the ID film clutched in his hand, and then at the crowd. They make a calculation. One of them barks at the closest people to stand back. The guard takes the ID film and slides it across the white machine, much like the one Castor printed them from. They urgently beckon Lem through the entrance. He turns back to face you. Thank you, sleeper. And then they are gone. You turn away and kick off hard from the guardrail, pushing your way through the crowd. When you reach the far wall, you turn back. The scene is chaos. The guards are closing the entrance, boarding complete, and the crowd is pushing against them. There are shouts and cries as the cordon is sealed and the guards retreat back to the docking bridge. And there are Lem and Mina, gliding up towards the docking bridge, bag in hand. Lem is facing away, focused on the steady climb, but Mina is in his arms and is facing back towards you. You watch her face, confused, sullen, but twinkling with a growing excitement as Lem carries her forward. As you watch Mina, you think about your future, about the future you might choose. You know one thing for certain, that future is on the eye. You no longer have any enthusiasm for being carried forward by the dreams of others, for grand futures that unfold like angelic wings across the horizon. The future is being made now, on this spinning ring, among its people and its systems. You are sure of that. But as you watch Mina disappear into the entrance of the side reel horizon, and much later, when you watch the ship pull away, you feel a sense of longing, a longing to be carried. Not by the systems that spin the suns, or by the corporations that run the colonies, but by love, towards an uncertain future, just as Mina was. That, you think, is the future you wish to make here on Erlin's Eye. So that's very similar to the one where only they go and you stay. Except, like, I think the difference was, uh... We, like, run away at the end. We have all three tickets and we run. Run. It's just the two of them going on board. You might be able to get that achievement with this one, too. Well, since I already got it, I can't test it. <laughs> no, I'm not doing this on an alt account to test it. I'm not doing it. Well, now we have to start another playthrough for the three-body problem, our final achievement. Follow all the missions until you've stolen this data. Don't tell them about the IDs three times, huh? Basically, I have to do exactly what I just did, but I have to also babysit Mina. Cool stuff.
Gonna need a thing or two to keep you busy on the days you'll miss next week. Excuse me, young man? What'd you say? Hmm. This is some nonsense I'm hearing. This is some crazy talk I'm hearing. You don't need anything to keep you busy. Don't need anything to keep you busy. Don't need nothing to keep you busy. Out of here. Let's start again. Let's pick the other one. Extract the war up. And what will you do? You'll have to. You'll get. You'll. Be, well, you basically said you wanted to be a hermit, right? You're just getting that experience. You're, you're getting the hermit experience. It should be amazing and fun for you. You should have fun. You should enjoy it. That's right, that's right, that's right. You'll miss that, which you've come to enjoy. I told you that. Well, there's always pros and cons, you know. Always pros and cons. Got that right? That's right. Quiet tutorials. Wait, I've got sunbathed already? From the get-go with this one? Oh, come on. I gotta be like that. It's the clouds. Oh, 
Maybe it's a minus one. Okay. Hey, well, notice. Hee <laughs> hee. Ah. That's what's over here. I don't care about your shit. Ah. I didn't need to get any of this shit. That's that one I needed it for the stall. You can't you can't minus one a one. What are you gonna do? Make it zero? What's up? What's happening? How's it going? How you doing tonight? I'll stare to you too. Uh, staying alive is like overrated and shit. better. One more day to get my HP back. Could get get our uh No, I have to do the I have to do the uh Intuit to get that free uh thing. Let's use my upgrade to un un negative one that. Ah, freaking come on. Why well, gotta be like that again? I don't gotta be like that again. my free stab. Ah, much better. Your butt? What? I wouldn't say that. Definitely not. Give me 
Lima for a stable more like your war. I can't believe this. Well, now I have to start making money, I guess. What's up, what's happening? How's it going, by the way, Zucky? I hope you're doing well tonight. We're, we're about done with this game. We're working for our final achievement right now. Make some money. How far away are we? It's almost serial time. Probably like 20 minutes. Maybe less. Although I am going to read stuff, so maybe not. Pretty close, though. Can't work on the side rail horizon until I upgrade engineer. Excuse me. Wait, really? Well, that's gonna put a, a dent in my plans. Maybe 30 minutes now. Or 40 minutes. Oh. You might be, you might be doing that. I really need the uh, engineer plus one. So I need to complete some other upgrade things. Complete some other drive or something somewhere. What must I do? Should babysit me not. You need during these forty minutes? Yeah, you could. Oh, 
like how negative is still positive. You're probably safe for the next 20 minutes. I hope you have a tasty cereal moles. I don't know, it's you. Gave me an apple greed. How convenient. Just to double check. It's engineer. Needs to be plus one. Okay, just check. There we go. Sure, you'll be here for the sleep barberations. <gasps> oh, I don't know. You better eat quickly. Oh, yeah, I gotta open that up, don't I? You have a tasty cereal after selling your loot. I'll go finish this game and be on the BRB screen when you get back.
I have to get Castor too, don't I? for that. Was Castor for low end then? Oh, I think it was. Maybe. Time for him to steal my money, I see. A meanie. I'm not entirely sure if I need this soap or not, but we're gonna go ahead and open it up. Found the safe side, so we don't have to worry about it. You probably don't need to do this though. How dare you steal my money? Fucking dare you. I'm picking the other one. What do you sell? Do you think you are to steal my money from me? Based on a dice roll. Unacceptable.
Oh, neutral? Not done with that? Hmm. Oh, that probably opens up the, uh, hotel, doesn't I don't technically need to do that either, I don't think. What I do need to do is get some food. Go back to work on this ship over here. It's time to wait to get screwed over. Yeah, 
Yeah, I might sell this crap this time. Ow. You bitch. I would need two to get to the repair thing. Sure, they were. Well, not too bad. All it did was open up the hotel. What I thought. Since I'm waiting anyway, I might as well check it out. Get screwed over. Oh, there the There you take away from my condition. more days for that to move. Mm. 
Can't do much there. Things shining. Give me all my energy. Even if you get a negative outcome, you just get energy. Awesome. Now it's poof. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on. Stop being rude. That was a four. That four got negative. Damn, three negatives in a row. Game telling me to F off. Hi, Chloe. Are you a cute kitty cat? No. Are you cute? I had no idea. Get out of here, Ethan. Don't you have some dying to go do somewhere? Thank you. 
nothing else I can do to that. Pretty cute, aren't you? Who said you could be so cute? Yeah, you! Oh, you just want attention here, don't you? This is the one time action. if I want to use the tube for that. I mean, I guess I could. I have three shots, right? Yeah. I have three chances to not mess that up. Hungry, huh? Let's check on your food super quick. That's a hungry kitty. Don't really like any of my options. One's gonna suck. It's time to take a stabilizer, isn't it? That's better. We got our stuff. We're excited. The data is extracted. I have to not tell them about it. Play for taunt. <clears throat> you look around the unit. You look at Lem. He looks better, softer, more full of life. It's as if a weight has been lifted from his shoulders. You think of Mina, a few units down, learning with the other children. You falter. Is the side rail horizon better than this? Lem starts to look a little nervous. You in trouble? Debt? Nothing, forget it. You sure are acting funny. I'm squints at you. Are you sure nothing's up? I'm good, just tired. I hear you, Lem nods. Been taking shifts moving freight at the midline. Hard work, but makes use of my Conway drone training. He pats you on the shoulder. He continues, but you barely hear him. What is holding you back? It is now or never. Will you leave together, or are you better off on the eye? Destroy the IDs is what, what we do, right? We don't tell them.
Yeah, yeah, you destroy them. You make a decision. Lem and Mina are better off here. You're better off here. Caster can go hang. Lem notices you aren't listening and stops. Fancy staying until Mina gets home? She'd be thrilled to see you. Uh, sure. It's not long until the side rail leaves, you know? I was thinking of taking Mina to see it off when it does. What do you think? Are you sure? I think so. It still hurts, but the way I see it, you can't hide from these things. Em looks across the tiny unit. Holding on. That's all we can do, right? Just hold on a little. He turns to you and smiles. The buzzer goes. That'll be her. Em gets up and opens the door, and Mina, a bundle of energy and life, rushes into the room. Robot! She shouts. I learned how to draw a tree today. Lem laughs. Show me. Mina suddenly grabs her slate, now half obscured by shiny black tape, and brings it over. I never even saw a tree, says Mina. But Esther showed me. She starts with a line, then she draws a V, splitting it into two directions. Then she splits those lines again. She keeps doing this, keeps splitting and splitting the lines until, before long, the whole slate is filled with branches. She sets it down proudly and hands you the pen. Your turn, she says. And a while later, when you leave, you don't even think to check for Castor by the door until it's too late. You stop and turn, halfway down the walkway, but there's nothing there. Even that little white cube is gone. You stop and take out the two films, the faces, yours and Lem's staring out from them like figures encased in ice. How did Castor even get these images? A rush of anger runs through your hand and you crumple them in your or run, or runs through you and you crumple them in your hand. You let the films drop, and they bounce once, twice, then fall through the grill of the walkway into darkness, the future leaving as easily as it arrived. You pause for a moment. There doesn't seem to be anything else to be done, so you keep walking, back through the low end, deep in thought. Oh my. I think that's everything to do, and now we just wait. Welcome back, Dolby. You say you're looking resplendent today? Yes, I am. I'm looking very resplendent today. I think all we can do is wait now. I need to sink a complete newbie. Probably a pre-order. Poor guy. Fuck your debt. Now the shrine it heads south. You see a ship headed from the south north. Turn off for dagger instead. Look back near something I see isn't following. Kept going north. And turn around and go for dagger. He did the same thing. Just a coincidence. wanted some of your garbage treasure. Your three your three shrine items. He was closer and so ended up at the sovereign dock before I I see. What happened then? Any more days we got here. Three, looks like. No, four. Circled around a rock and sunk him. <sighs> Doesn't even sound like he fought back. You monster. Ow. 
Was it four? Oh, rude. I know it's like a random chance, but still. How dare the random chance actually not work out in my favor? Time to sleep. This is into it. Uh. I gotta do that first. He didn't when I boarded he was on his megaphone saying something I don't know couldn't hear him. you said I mean no harm please don't seek me Ruthlessly slaughtered somebody. Well, there's Gold Hoarder, I think, next to the set. You see if he hasn't got a clue what he's doing. So he just left it there and didn't sell it? Interesting. There's only three pieces. He never returned. He probably turned the game off for the night. Like, damn, these people are so rude. My like, this was the ship fleet sloop you sunk because you wanted it. You were hopping for it. It was yours. I dare that. they try to take your ship fleet from you. I'm not very good at gambling. I think I should stick to just doing it in video games. This guy just opted to make some terrible movements that anybody with loot would deem odd. Well, it's just three pieces. Maybe they just didn't care about three pieces, you know? Time has arrived. Lem and Mina, worker and daughter. The time has arrived. Are we ready for our final ending and final achievement? Are we ready? I bet we are, right? 
We rock. We're ready. Let's go. There is a crowd, but you spot Lem and Mina immediately as you enter the dock. They are anchored, like everyone else, along the viewing platform, watching the final stages of the side rail horizon's loading and preparation. Lem! He turns and searches nervously through the faces to see who called. Then he spots you, and a weak smile passes across his face. You move up and join him on the platform. He decided to come watch in the end. He nods at a sleepy-looking Mina, whose bright eyes are locked on the yellow hull of the side rail horizon. Meany wouldn't let me stay away. I'm sorry, Lem. Sleeper laughs weakly. <laughs> what have you got to be sorry for, Sleeper? As far as I know, Sendre Silas doesn't answer to you. You three watch the ship for a while, in the same hushed state as most of the crowd. All the anger seems to have faded out of those who didn't make the crew. Perhaps down on the low end, the tambour is full of angry workers, drunkenly denouncing Silas. But up here, the atmosphere is reflective, somewhere between a funeral and a ritual. You seem to have a lot on your mind, friend. Then puts a hand on your shoulder. Want to tell me what's been bothering you? I'm worried about you. Us? He strokes. He reflexively strokes Mina's head. Don't worry about us. He turns away from the ship to face you. If you think this is the worst we've been through, then you are wrong. Then puts Mina down beside him. She kicks off, glides to the viewing window, and presses her nose against it. You know, there's been plenty of cycles where I thought Mina would be better off without me. Who am I to decide her life for her? To drag her through... He gestures all round at the eye. All this. But when I see her smiling, I see her dealing with things. Making fun out of nothing. It reminds me that she's the one dragging me through. This is her world now. And who am I to decide it isn't good enough for her? You ever hear of the three-body problem? Uh, nope. It's a physics thing. The idea is that once you have three bodies moving in space, affecting each other, the results cannot be predicted. It's chaos. Lem starts trying to demonstrate with his hands, wheeling them around each other as he speaks. That's how I see us. Me, Mina, and, well, you, now. We are all bodies in space, and we can't see how that's going to work out for us. But the important thing is we are all affecting each other, right? It's not just one of us, calling the shots, making the decisions, shaping the others. Each one is equal, pushes and pulls and is pushed and pulled in turn. And maybe there are other bodies too, right? The eye, Esther a few units down, other kids, other systems. Hell, the whole Helion solar systems itself. And some of these bodies have bigger forces, bigger effects. But none of them, not one, can totally dictate the movements of the others. So the whole thing keeps spinning and going, and in the middle of it is us three. And everything we do has an effect. A real effect in the system. On each other. And if we move together, push together, hell, maybe the effect can grow. Maybe chaos can help us. He stops suddenly, noticing how rapid his speech has become. He drops his hands to his sides. Well, that's it, he laughs. I understand. Lem nods and turns back to watch Mina as the docking clamps release on the side rail horizon. A tremor goes through the watching crowd, but no one speaks. Mina, suddenly scared, kicks off from the windows and glides back into your arms. She settles there. The lack of gravity meaning you can't feel her weight. Only, only the grip of her small hands on your clothes. Then the side rail horizon leaves. The spectacle of a vast machine doing the job it was built to do, hypnotizing half the crowd into stunned silence. But, despite the scale of the endeavor, and your part in it, you can't feel proud, or even impressed. What you see instead, as Mina clings onto you for comfort, is that same system Lem just described for you. In it, the side reel and the Silas Foundation are as vast as the sun, around which millions of other bodies orbit. Their scale is terrifying, and the breadth of their influence impossible to conceive. Yet here, in this small, nested system of Lem, of Mina, of you, of the eye with its orbits and transits, and the people that are linked to it, 
Those vast forces can be countered. They shift you, yes, and the people around you. But they do not negate the pull of friendship, the orbits of community. As the side rail moves away from the dock, you think of the bodies on it. Those thousands of cryosleepers that, like the person you once were, have given themselves over to that system. You imagine each of them has their reasons, their dreams, their fears. But you worry for them. You worry that they have shackled themselves to something so much bigger than themselves that it would crush them without a thought. The thought makes you bring Mina closer, holding her too. And as you do, Lem puts an arm around you both, and you stand together like that for a while, until the bright spots of the side rail horizon's drives have faded into the dark, and it is time to go home. Aww. The three-body problem achievement unlocked stayed in the orbit of others. Aww. That was adorable. We did it. We did it. We're gone with the guy. Woohoo! Woohoo! We got it. We're ready. We're rolling. We have finished this cool game. Isn't that cool? Isn't that awesome? Isn't that amazing? Isn't that powerful? Wow! That's GG there. That's GG there. Look. Look, 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 look for this one. That's GG there. G27,000. Wow, you break the audio if you do this. <laughs> GG. Woo. All done. Yeah. Clever, he distracted you with nonsense that you missed your flight. God damn it, that's right. He made me miss my flight. That's just selfish. See, yeah, that's right. He made me miss my flight. There's only one thing you're ready for. That was for me finishing this game, right? You meant the dancing down there? Oh. Okay, 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 okay. Let's see. What up? Not exciting. What is it? It's not dancing. That's what. That's what dancing is. You go back and forth. That's what dancing is. Just because you don't dance doesn't mean that's not dancing. Who says you have to have a fancy chart of moves to go dancing? You don't have to know how to tango to do a dance. You just move. Just move your body. See, that's dancing, not flipping across each other's screen. That's totally dancing. Whoop. Oh, this is the same dialogue. Strange choice, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, this part's the same. GG. Wow! So this one would lock you into the playthrough, too. And that's why you can't... One of the reasons why you can't do this one in the same playthrough as the other ones. Is you have to not tell uh, Lem about the IDs that you destroy them. Instead of holding on to them. GG. This cool game is done. It definitely took longer than I thought it was going to. I thought it was going to be done in less than the three hours I was doing. But that last chapter of the DLC was longer than uh, I expected. It's somehow been five hours. That's crazy. Oh, it's these bitches. These bitches, Rofidia, please. No oh, fancy flotilla yacht. Well, it kind of looks like it's there, even though it's not there. Wait, isn't it there? Yeah, it is there. It's there by this point. Hmm. 
I gotta say, there's just one thing I'm curious about. I'm curious what happens if you let yourself die. You probably just go back to the title screen. You know that thing I almost did without doing it accidentally? On my first stream? For, for the cell liberation too. Let's do it. Cell liberation. What's that sound mean? Let's go to the next segment, huh? It's too late now. Ah, you're just picky. We're all ready. Didn't we just do a celebration? You expect me to be horizontal to look like I'm sleeping? Is that what a celebration is? Ooh, it turned pink. I don't think I've ever let it get this far before. Attempting recovery. Tutorial breakdown. Yeah, I never broke down, so I guess I never got this tutorial. Tutorial breakdown. Your condition has reached zero and you have suffered a breakdown. One of your skills is broken. It will be locked to negative one and all perks disabled. It can be fixed with one upgrade point. After you rest, your body will recover some condition, but your skill will remain broken until it is fixed. Engage is down. That you can't die. I think so. <laughs> Went halfway. We call that a freebie. Yeah, but what happens if you, uh... Lose all your skills and this, uh, it's like, well, uh, break all your shit. I'm curious. I bet you've never seen that breakdown tutorial before. I almost got to see it on my first place. Hello? You got to see some new content, though. You knew I was going to test to see if you could actually die in this game. Come on now. Now we must test for science, whether anything happens after they're all broken. It's so generous though, it gives you half of your HP back. Yeah. Uh, did I get shot in my other playthrough? What? Ethan shoots you the moment you leave. You don't even have time to react. The bullet passes directly through your leg. And your body immediately switches to emergency mode. You don't even... Oh yeah. 
As you shut, your senses shut down, you feel like you are slipping underwater. You stare out at Ethan from a closed body, a failing system. You can't read his expression. Anger, maybe, or disgust, but not hatred. No, something other than hatred. Your eyes fall on the weapon in his hand. It isn't the gun you saw taken away in the bar. Instead, it is some snub boxy thing, ugly and bent. Ethan sees you looking at it. He laughs. Yeah, I never did get mine back from those shitheads at the compressor. He twists the improvised weapon in his hand. Had someone make me this one in the bright market, especially for my visit today. So this is what happens if you don't get his gun. You pull yourself against the doorway and sit against it. It is hard to focus on Ethan's speech amongst the cloud of notifications and errors. You feel something wet on the back of your legs. Ethan leans closer. Stay awake. Someone is coming just to see you. Someone? He grins, still pleased to bait you with his games. Our buddy Maywick. He waits for your reaction. Are you crazy? You are crazy, sleeper, for thinking I'd kill one of my own for you. He laughs long and loud, and you hate him for it. You still don't get it, do you, sleeper? Ethan spits. When they cancelled that contract, I lost everything. My reputation, my payout, any way of getting off this shitty station. Everything. This part sounds pretty familiar. All I had left was you. I feel like this part's the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll be tell you something else, and then he's dead. <coughs> yeah, that part was the same. Whoa. That's true, I can't run this time, so that's a little different, right? It moves smoothly, it's rifle trained on the static Ethan. You are frozen in fear. Your damage stopping you running, even if you could. He doesn't say a word, but his eyes meet yours and they are glowing. And then the tinnitus starts, white hot and impossible to escape. How is he doing it? You clasp your hands to either side of your head in pain. Uh-oh. Maywick lifts you, writhing out from the doorway and lays you out in the corridor. Your whole head screams with pain, but he proceeds slowly, even gently, laying you beside Ethan. And as he does, you feel it, pressing into your stomach, Ethan's improvised gun. And then we, we, we shoot him anyway. Grab it. Through the haze of pain, you manage to curl your fingers around it. Maywick is close. So close. You feel him run some tool, some scanner along your back. Hold on to it. You grip the gun hard as the pain flares, inching your finger over the trigger. Maywick grabs your shoulder and searches your neck for some mark or serial number. Then his hand is on your shoulder. Then he is flipping you over to face him, and in that moment you see a flash of surprise in his eyes as they fall on the gun. Squeeze! The gun explodes in your hand, the blast whiting out Maywick, whiting out everything. All you see are the wheeling stars. They are spinning and you are suddenly dizzy. Though the, eye has though the eye has always spun like this, hasn't it? You hear voices, shouts, but somehow your eyes are still on the spinning stars, going round and round in their cycles. You know how this works. As long as you keep your eyes on the stars, you'll stay here, among the people of the eye. Because you know that behind them is nothing, just a gap that stretches to forever. And if you let your eyes drift, let them go to that gap, then that is where you will go. Somewhere far away, somewhere that body of yours can't take you. So you keep looking at those stars. You keep watching those whirling, impossible systems of orbits and passages. Those vast objects made insignificant by distance. You watch them for a lifetime, for a moment. You watch them until it is time to get up. Until hands lift you to your feet and the crowd carries you to a bench where they sit you and let you rest. Here the conversation ebbs and flows. Sometimes it is angry. Sometimes people are angry at you for bringing the, this violence here. Sometimes it is soft, sympathetic. The lilting tones of concern coming to you through a fog. But it too fades until it is only a few voices and then a couple and then only one. And finally, after so long, your body begins to open up to let the words in and you hear them for the first time. 
Wake up, sleeper. And you do. And you get up. And as you do, you hear the sound of thousands of people getting on with their lives. Thousands of people who are just going to keep going until they can't anymore. And so you limp away from the voice, and you join them. Wait. I lost another skill there? So... My punishment for not getting the gun, not, not doing anything with Ethan, is to have a skill breakdown. Because I'm back to attempting recovery, right? I wasn't at re attempting recovery. I was working my way back down. So, ignoring Ethan breaks your shit. You have to repair at least one skill if you ignore Ethan. For that long. But yeah, you still shoot him and die. That's not so different. Wait, wait, wait. How do I select it? I get it. Here's your answer, unkillable. Seems so. I'm curious, though, what happens after you die when everything's all broken. Yeah, I recognize this text. I've seen that text. Exactly what you said before. There's no fail state. It's impossible to die. No risk of death. I thought I was gonna die. Although I didn't think it was gonna game over me and put me back at the beginning. I thought maybe if I, if I would die, it would probably put me back at the start of the day. So I could like, eat some food or some shit. It is an interesting mechanic though that it breaks your shit. It'd be really hard to fully upgrade everything if you break all your shit. Like how the game gave me a six there. It's like, please eat something, do something. Stop killing yourself! Well, it's broken shit. The only downside to having this stuff broken is that it's minus one. So like if you put in a five dice, it becomes a four. But you can still play the game with everything broken. It's just that you're probably not going to be quite as lucky. Until you make enough progress to unbreak all your shit. In this playthrough, Lem and Mina stay with me on the eye, but I bet you we never talk to them again. No reason to. No reason they'd come back. The only characters that appear in the DLC are ones that did not leave, for instance. Characters that you could have sent away on a diff different ending playthrough, whatever. Aren't gonna be around for other stuff. I'm sure the canon ending is for them to go off. If there is technically a canon ending, there's gonna be a citizen sleeper too, so maybe. If they don't just have entirely new characters. Look at that! Everything's broken! Now what happens when we... Why is that there now? Self-repair wasn't there before, was it? Why would self-repair be there now? I'm confused. It's like, please do something. Please do something. You're broken. Aren't we all broken? Yes, please do something. I'm gonna see what happens when I let this thing go again. Probably nothing. Because there's nothing more for it to break. I can't break it more. 
That one's written out too quickly. Yeah, their stuff's pretty early game. That's why there's like three, four endings tied to it. Let's see how nothing happens. Yeah, nothing broke. Yeah, you just set their breakdown for forever. Nothing went to negative two or anything. It said breakdown that time, but it didn't have a thing pop up saying what broke. Borky Bork. Mm. Lemon, Mina, or Ash? Wow, that's a tough choice. Who would you rather ha hang out with? Such a tough decision. Oh, let me think real hard about that one. Now we've discovered all the cool things about the game. Ash, of course, you'd rather hang out with Ash, huh? Good, good, good. I successfully managed to avoid a breakdown in my first playthrough. I too wish I could just not eat food and then just reboot at half HP. No! Oh yeah. It's a cool game though. I'm sure the second game will be cool too. I personally don't think it will have any of the characters from this game though. Maybe someone will make a cameo appearance. I'm sure they'll manage to squeeze Ash in there somewhere so we can be like, oh, the best character. Oh, you don't? You love food? Yeah, I like food just fine. Well, uh, think of how much money you'd save if you didn't eat food and then you like rebooted at half HP and you could never starve to death. Think how much money you'd save. You'd kill the entire food economy. If everybody just started doing that. We rest in peace. And there we go. That concludes Citizen Sleeper. Was that a cool game? I think it was a pretty cool game. Five stars. I had fun. Extractor's probably the toughest one to start with if you want to do Lemon Mina. Did it upgrade the thing twice? Citizen Sleeper 2 Starward Vector will take you to a new location. Ooh, the Starward Belt, huh? Put you in the declining body of a new sleeper. And once again, ask you to build a life for yourself among the stars. But this time, you have a ramshackle ship and a crew you've recruited. Both of which you need to steer them through a system-wide crisis. Bro, yeah, that's gonna get old characters. I think so? Maybe. Oh yeah, that's what it says right here on the screen. Step into the body of a new sleeper on the run in the Starward Belt as they try to build a crew, take on contracts, and find a future. 
We got we got like a mercenary sleeper in the second game whenever it comes out. I'll be cool. But uh I don't have okay, there's a few characters that were going to the Starward belt. We got the lady from the bar, Tala or whatever her name was. Blit Bliss went to the Starward belt with Ankita as well. I don't think Esh said where she was going, but she left as well. Maybe we're all going to the Star Wars belt, though, aren't they? Well, yeah, I guess all those characters could pop up in the second one. You're, you're probably not getting Lemon Mina, because... The canon story is probably for them to go on that ship, which is going to, what, Silas 1 or whatever? Wherever the hell that is? So you probably won't see them again. Plant Lady from the Flotilla... Oh yeah, pretty much everybody from the flotilla is a possibility. Soul, uh, Aki, Eater. They're all possibilities. Pretty much the ones that are guaranteed not. You're not gonna see is Lemon Mina. Rico. Uh, Fang, not, probably not Fang. Uh, he Helene, no. Uh, any of the Yodigan guys. I forget what that lady's name was. With the doctor guy. I forget what her name was. Nope, I can't think of it. She had a cool design though. Like that robot arm. But nope, can't think of her name. That's been too many weeks. It's been like three or four weeks since I last seen her. It's gone now. I remember the stuff when it comes back, right? I'll be like, oh yeah, you. Space must suck. Space without, like, instant fast travel would suck a lot. Because it would take forever to get anywhere. You spend, like, half your life just going to a new planet. What if that planet sucks? Well, that's the worst vacation ever. Imagine if it, imagine if you still took, uh, like, months to travel to, to uh, Hawaii or some shit. We wanted to go on a vacation, but it took you like six months to travel there. Just multiply that times ten in that space. Almost kind of like the old days before cars and stuff. But all you had was like a horse carriage. Or if you didn't even have horses, just go on foot. It took forever to get anywhere. But like even longer, because space is so fucking huge. It's like just it's like the old days, but even worse. <laughs> Travel so long that everything you do is one way. Yeah, if you decide to do anything, that's like it, man. You gotta change your mind and be like, nah, never mind. Let's go back home. When home is like twenty years away. Ten years to travel to a place, find out it's awful and too bad. Ten years back, now ten years forward, or you're stuck. Yeah. Can't see family. They'd have to come with you, man. I guess it's gotta be a group decision. Space would only be cool if you could travel around instantaneously. Like in those, uh... All those, uh, space things where they got those, like, light travel or whatever. Kinda like, uh... What was that? Star Echo of Star Song had? It had, like, the instant transport thing, right, so you could go all around. Without that, though, it would just suck. If we came here, you did like it, you'd be back home within seven hours. That's true. I'm like, this, this sucks, I'm out of here. Bring back my trees. Right now. That's a cool game, though. But yeah, yeah, I'm not sure that's a cool world that I'd want to live in. I don't think so. I, I, I'm biased towards liking the, being on planets instead of spaceships. You get to see all like the cool trees, some fresh air. I guess that depends on where you are, but... Some vitamin D out there with the sun, not artificially created or whatever. No simulated environment. You're cool, no, don't do it! Don't do it! Just keep me on the rock. I'll, I'll stay on the planet. 
I feel like I'd get become claustrophobic out in space anyway, because you're just stuck on a ship. You can't just go outside. Go for a walk. What are you gonna do? Put on your spacesuit and walk on the, the edge of the, the station? That don't sound like much fun to me. It would be like being stuck, traveling around everywhere in like a giant car, right? Oh wait, like an RV, right? It'd be like living like in an RV. A little bit, a spaceship would be a bit bigger, but... You're basically just imagining just living in an RV all the time. Never being able to leave because the air outside of the RV is non-existent and you, you'll die. The only way you can leave the RV is in your special spacesuit. I come to your house. I refuse! I refuse! Not about you, but I'd like to go outside. I don't want to just live in the RV space station forever. I think I'd go insane if I could never go outside, man. Let's go out and walk in some nature. Your space station home not good enough for you? No, your space station home's not good enough for me. Not good enough. No. That was a cool game, though. I'll totally play Citizen Sleeper 2 whenever it comes out. Although, uh, maybe not right away. It's probably going to have DLC like this one, right? Wow. I'll probably go to Game Pass, too. We'll see, we'll see. I'm sure the second one will be cool too. This one was pretty cool. It's fine, I'll invite your avatar instead. Why, thank you. I, I love spaceships. They're so elegant. So amazing. They take you to many places as slowly as possible. What's not the like? Wow. Well, actually, they had those, what, can channels? Con channels? Whatever. They That's how they quickly transported goods, right? Before they, like, shut down for whatever reason. I don't see why they don't have the technology to quickly transport people. I guess it takes a while to get there. If we don't blow ourselves to kingdoms come, you know, we'll get there someday. We'll have our slow-ass spaceships. We'll be doing this exact shit you see in this game. We'll have our own stations and shit. Uh, eventually, maybe we'll have the fast travel. That's a long way away, though. I'm not gonna get to see all that, but so I can speculate. I might be end up completely wrong from how things will turn out, but you know, I won't be around then to be like, "Ha ha, I was wrong." Oh, oh, I'll be long gone by then. Um, that's because I'm talking like that's probably like centuries in the future, man. In the same kind of lifestyle in this game, that's probably cent still centuries away. It's cool to speculate, though. Just stay away from the secret space station button. You'll have your own colony until they grow large enough to decide they want to separate. Then it'll be like, damn, didn't we do this shit on planet Earth? Like, come on. Why are we doing this shit again, man? That's pretty much exactly what happens, though. They separate and go get their own colony. You got a lot more room out in space, though. You're not stuck on just one rock. You can go find another rock. In outer space, there's a million billion rocks. And if you have the terraforming technology they kind of had in this game, you, you, you could just take any rock and make it habitable, right? It'd be a good time! Be like, I choose this little asteroid over here. This is a planet Prophelia now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you doing, cat? Are you here to congratulate me? She took one look at me and then left. I guess not. She's probably like, this crazy person. Mm, I'm finishing this game much later than I expected. I expected to finish this game at three hours. Definitely not going to be able to complete any other game tonight. Mm. 
he just gonna run around? Oh, he just gonna come back in and run around. Oh, there she go again. I know I just gave her food recently. Huh? Three can, it's only midway. Oh, it's only yeah, it's only a poultry four thirty in the morning. Let's stay up till noon. What do you think? Let's stay up till noon. What do you think? That other game I was talking about it says four to five hours. You know, it's gonna be like seven hours for me, right? Stay up till noon. Let's do it. Noon my time, by the way. Let's do it. You still have Monday? Oh, wait. Let's see. I guess that's true. Monday's the 29th, though. What if they kill it at midnight? What if they kill the game at midnight? <gasps> We're gonna do that. They won't? You don't think so? I'm wrong, I can ban you? Hmm. If you're wrong, you have to give me... How much is it? Like $15 normally, right? For that game we were talking about. Actually, I've heard you can uh, just unplug your console. And, uh... Alright, I was trying to spell it the way that it's supposed to be spelled, not the way that... Again, it's actually spelled. Oh, it's thirteen dollars normally. What do you get if you're right? You even have Saturday? That's true. I could just do the that game tomorrow instead of sleeping dogs. Which is probably what I'll do. We'll just do it tomorrow. Sleeping Dogs isn't going anywhere. It can wait another week. It's not time limited. It's just which disc or which console I can play it on limited. <laughs> That's the only limit it's got. What do you get if you're right? Absolutely nothing. Because we'll just play it tomorrow instead of Sleeping Dogs. But we'll, we'll find out. I go then, start right now. Like, start now and then finish later. And finish tomorrow, is that what you're saying? Hee hee hee. Like, do like two, three hours today and then do the rest of it tomorrow. I well, suppose I could do that. That way we don't have to chance it. I, I don't want to find out if it goes by by 12.01 a.m. on the day or if it goes out at 11.59 p.m. on the day. I don't care to find out. I'd rather not ever risk it. Because if I do, then you know what that means. I means I have to buy the game to finish it. And I've been saving up my Microsoft reward points to uh, get something, you know, not, not something that I didn't finish in time. I've been saving up my points to get the uh, Octopath Traveler when it goes on sale sometime. Because I don't think that one's ever coming in PlayStation. It's really weird. The first game is uh, on PC and uh, Xbox and uh, Nintendo Switch, I think. And uh, the second game is on PC, I think, and uh, PlayStation. But not on Xbox. It's really fucking weird. And they removed Octopath Traveler from Game Pass a while ago. It might come back, though. But if not, I can't exactly use my Microsoft Word points on the PSN cards anymore. Because Amazon is a bitch. And decided that you can't use uh, gift card balances to redeem gift cards. Or digital cards, or whatever. I can't do that anymore. None of the other retailers on that 
decide to all do this the same thing either. There's no way to uh, use your Microsoft for word points to get a card to get a digital card AMR. So the only option is to uh, uh, either just buy Xbox games or uh, do Amazon gift card but buy physical games I guess instead of the gift card, digital wallet, whatever. Feeling like you want to review? You can review. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll stop yibber yabber into making this uh, this YouTube vod even longer, right? 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 That was that was a very cool hip hopping and bopping popping. Oh, very cool. It was very profile. It was very awesome. I enjoyed Citizen Sleeper. I look forward to the second game when it comes out, and after it has some DLC added that it will probably add. I'll probably try it someday. Definitely when it comes to Game Pass. I still have Game Pass till like the end of next year. I've got a good ways yet. Wow. Although I think the Game Pass conversion still works, but it's like $15 now instead of $1, so... I could probably still just keep doing that too. Maybe, I don't know. We'll see what you, that's that's still a good ways off. Alright, alright, alright. That's it. Citizen Sleeper VOD watchers. That's it. That's it. Citizen Sleeper has finally been completed. Very cool game. I enjoyed it. Ten out of ten, right? Five stars. On to the next one. See you later, alligators. See you in the Star Wars belt next time with Citizen Sleeper, right? Yeah.